Thank you for calling Triangle Agency. All of our agents are currently assisting other callers, but your call is very important to us. Please stay on the line and your call will be answered in the order it was received. Your current place in the queue is 313,504. And your estimated wait time is 12 years, 6 months, 14 days, 8 hours, 4 minutes, 13 seconds. In the event you cannot wait, please visit us at hauntedtable.games to see if we can help you out on our helpful forums.
Hey, okay, we're live now. Oh no, I'm on the wrong screen though. <laughs> <laughs> One sec. Boom. Now we're live on the right screen. <laughs> God damn it. I we love waited. to be on the right straight screen. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. I was on the three person screen, not the four person screen. Um hi, welcome to plus one exp. <laughs> um we're a weird little channel that multiclasses in tabletop game design, beard and skin care alchemy, and the Bardic College of Content Creation. Our dream and hope you're at plus ones to help amazing designers find great players who love their games and <laughs> help amazing players find great designers whose games they can love. I did that offhand because I forgot that you have to do an intro at the top of streams until literally right now mm. um <laughs> so fun. honestly that's pretty impressive for me because we usually can't even do it on script <laughs> correct anyway um we're back we're playing session two of our triangle agency mini campaign um uh let's introduce everybody uh sarah you can go first <laughs> uh hi i'm osaric franco i'm your stepdad and one of the cult leaders here on plus one um i uh, my pronouns are she her i'm playing uh riker dodge uh whose pronouns are he him uh and he's a mess but i like him a lot and uh i'm really excited to play him some more that's it that's all <laughs> <laughs> perfect uh petty do you want to introduce yourself oh sure i am petty that's also my name on the internet petty energy i will be playing the character whose name i definitely remember don't even worry about it. Lowry, that's right, double L. Layla Lowry, that's what it was. It's been a long day. Um, <laughs> me and my character's pronouns are both uh, she, her. Perfect. Um, well, I should have introduced myself at the top instead of just introducing the channel. I'm, I'm Keegan EXE. Uh, you can find me online at Keegan EXE, and I'm playing Tyler Davis. Um, and then Caleb, uh, hi, uh, introduce yourself. Tell everybody a Hello. little bit about what we're playing. You get it. Yeah, uh, I'm Caleb. We're going to play Triangle Agency, a game that I am the lead designer for, uh, for with my company Haunted Table. Um, we did our first episode last week, and this is our second. So if you're just joining us, thank you for catching up or for jumping in uh, to see what we're going to do today. Uh, we're going to start by talking a little bit about character advancement and revealing some stuff that doesn't exist on the internet anywhere else yet uh, as we sort of talk through some uh, basics on how characters can develop in Triangle Agency. And then we'll be doing another mission today that I'm very excited about. Hell yeah. Well, you could take it away, I guess. <laughs> yeah, awesome. And I forgot to say, if you haven't already, if you go to kickstarter.hauntedtable.games, you can sign up for the Kickstarter, which is going to be happening in almost exactly a month, which is so wild Ooh. to me right now. Uh, my design partner and I have been working very hard this week, um, and I am super excited to show you all the stuff that we have. Um, but yes, I'm going to go ahead and start with some stuff that we've discussed a little bit off stream already, but that I'm going to describe for you, which is each of our members of this uh, group, this field team, were able to pick how they spent their time between missions. Uh, as a GM, you're able to decide, and as a group, you're able to decide between giving everybody one block of time or three blocks of time. We're doing a very weird version of the character creation because we only have a couple of, uh, ep of missions to do where I'm like super accelerating some of that. But everybody got to pick three blocks of time to spend. And there are some specifics to those and some surprises in those that I'm not gonna get into here. But the basics are, you can select to go work at the agency, spend time uh, improving your performance, uh, and increase the quality assurances allowed for you uh, when you go back out onto the field, which makes it less likely that you'll fail on roles. You can spend time in private practicing your skills and developing uh, additional abilities, which the agency does not officially permit. Uh, or you can spend time with the relationships in your life um, and gain a benefit from the kinds of favors that person can do for you um, and also uh, kind of build your relationship uh, to them overall. So we have those choices made in this group and we can talk about them for each, but can we start with uh, Tylar? Yeah, of course. I am just, give me one second. Um, we can't start with me though. Um, I have leveled up three different ways because like you said, we are leveling up three times. Um, I'm vamping while I open the Discord back up and see how <laughs> I spent it. <laughs> um, cool. Um, so I have placed... Here we go. Uh, let's transition it back over here. Um, cool. So I've placed three points into my presence. Um, I have leveled up 
uh, Whisper, I leveled up uh, Say Again, and I got the ability Perfect Comeback. And to and- talk a little bit about how that part works, um, in the game, every time you use a skill, you mark a potential in that skill. You express that potential by practicing the skill and allowing the other members of your group to answer a question about you that's unique to each skill. Uh, that then, based on the answer the group gives, determines the next skill you get. In regular play, they have to answer that question a couple of times, uh, and you get a chance to sort of influence how that goes by adjusting your behavior, if you'd like, toward a particular angle. Um, But in this case, we answered uh, all uh, at once to pick the new skill. Yeah, um, so the question we asked this time was, uh, when someone is wrong, I either A, I let them believe they were right, or B, I make them know it. Uh, and the group decided B, I make them know it. So I unlocked perfect comeback. <laughs> we'll see that if it comes up. And mm-hmm. then um, I leveled my relationship with the child who lives down the hall from me, Elvis Dalton. Um, and now I have the connection bonus fashionable. Um, <laughs> this person has everything you need in their closet. If you need a change of clothes, disguise, or an impressive outfit of some kind, they'll provide it quick and easily. Um, so my emo child neighbor uh, is going to let me borrow some Not of his closet. Not he cares or anything. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yes, absolutely. And those are always, those, that person is able to help you a uh, mission after the time that you spent time with them. Um, and there are some other effects that happen if you max out a connection, which we can talk about if that happens during this game. Cool. Yeah, awesome. So then let's go to Riker, I guess. Yeah, so I did a similar thing. And by similar, I mean the exact same thing. Riker spent some time with the agency working on um and on his skills uh coming out of the last mission i think he was feeling a little shaky so we've added to empathy subtlety and professionalism um one point in each uh he then also spent some time in secret working on um the uh would you like do you want some more or would you like some more move uh to unlock uh a new move of can i try uh which is very good (laughs) Uh, Penny, we this was the question that we asked. I'm just curious what your answer would be. Um, what is Riker more likely to share? Encouragement or judgment? Encouragement. Yeah, that's yeah. what we we kind of like on the call. We're like, this one's a clear, clear one. So that's what we went with. <laughs> uh, a wild Pascal has appeared. Hello, Pascal. Um, we, 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 Pascal's entered the chat. And then I did, um, Riker just really hated that... Uh, Everything had gone so poorly for Ruby, uh, the little girl that we met uh, in our mission last time. So I think that he uh, spent some time really trying to repair that relationship. Uh, I'm by either uh, telling her how the sheep were doing. Uh, maybe he got her a stuffed little lamb uh, that he <laughs> like dyed uh, red and left it uh, at the house. And then I think we have. To- an opportunity to play that out today, so I'm, I think okay, we're going to awesome. do that. The um, but a yes, that's a little that, lamb. A say? little lamb. Yes, I would say that. I would say that. <laughs> it um, highlights so something I- that is possible in this game, which is that you can add relationships based on what happens to you uh, during missions. You are not always limited to your initial three, um, and so it became very obvious at the end of the last mission. Like, okay, Ruby needs to be a relationship because this is someone that this character is really, really interested in spending more time with and sort of making up uh, with. So as soon as we finished last time, I was like, the, and, and Ruby is now a relationship for Riker. I love it. Um, and because of that, um, I've got the power uh, connected so I can lean on Ruby uh, to <laughs> get a hold of whoever I need to get a hold of because she is a little girl that just has a, what are, what are those spinny things with all the names? A Rolodex? A Rolodex, yes. Oh. The Rolodex. Oh, fidget spinner. <laughs> a fidget hey, spinner with many a, names. A fidget spinner Rolodex is actually a genius, and we yeah. need to make it. TM, 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 TM. That's ours. I Go just look at my names all day. <laughs> uh, so that's Riker. That. And so uh, we have not talked yet. This is going to be a fun in-person one. We have not talked yet about what Layla has chosen. So what do you think? Uh, so I, I think I will stick with what I said right before we went live, and Layla's going to double down on Paris because I want to. I used to see the breadth of it. We've seen the split. I'm going to just go double up on it. So Layla, last time at the end of the last session, used the I know a shortcut. Yes, so... absolutely. And your uh, question for I know a shortcut 
Um, do you have that one written down? I can uh, grab it for you. So for the question, is that is it one of the ones from reception, or is it one of the or is it under? Because I see it's uh, a unique so... question that I would have passed to you at character creation, but I don't know. I might not have it for you right now. Let me see if I can pull it out for you. Um, just, just, just... Live, everybody. <laughs> It's great. Yeah. Um, sorry, I closed out of Discord because I, it is a distraction to me. No, you're good. We can keep just keep talking about turgles while you do this, um, which oh are little so frog turgles. dudes from Star Wars. Um, oh, they're very turtles. cute. I heard torkles. I'm like, I mean, I like Pokemon too, but what does that have to do with anything? I guess it's also red. <laughs> no i did say turgle with a g um it's a little frog yeah, man yeah. and he has a gun um i didn't know what it was until just today great. yeah um okay so the ability you used was <laughs> i know a shortcut yes. uh turgle destroyed um and the i am i have pulled out my lightsaber and i have slashed this no! and have. um uh your question for us uh, Layla is I see the world for what it is or for what it could be. Ooh, ooh, that's hard for this one. I'm so as the say... GM, I'm the tiebreaker. So the other two have to answer before. I... Uh, yeah, I'm gonna say uh, for what it could be. I feel like uh, I'm getting like aspirational vibes. Yeah, that's a hard one. I think I agree with you there, Sarah. Yeah. I think it is uh, for the for what the world could be. All right. You are going to get a skill called Stitch. I will paste that into oh. the Discord. And um, if what, it comes up today, then uh, we will learn what it does. <laughs> and then you get two more choices. So if that's the only skill you used last time, which I think it is, then you can't do the skill again, but you can pick okay. a relationship to spend time with, or you can add three quality assurances somewhere. I think I would add the three quality assurances because I ran through all of my attentiveness, and I would like that back. Uh, yeah, that sounds that sounds great. So you can add it to uh, any qualities. This one, just so you know, uses subtlety, so that might be on your mind depending on where, how many, like what you add where. Does um, it have to be? So does it have to be one of the? I can add. I can add them to anyone, or does it have to be one of the ones for my self assessment? You can, can add them anywhere. Anywhere. Yeah. anywhere. Okay. In that case, we will go with subtlety then. If that's what I need for it. Hell yeah. And then, would you like to spend time with a relationship as well? I will. Who would I spend time with? I could have frenemy time with Monet. <laughs> Ooh. I love Ooh. frenemy time. Frenemy time's great. Oh my gosh, we haven't seen each other in so long. Hi. <laughs> I think that's a great idea. And that could also be a scene we do this morning, if that's what you want to do. <laughs> I like that a lot. Cool. So Monet has the ability influencing. Um, you can tell them about an idea, trend, or opinion, and they'll spread it through their network. It's more likely you'll meet people for the rest of your mission who share that opinion than not. Um, so that will be, uh, you can just put that in, and if that comes up over the mission and you would like to call on Monet's help, um, you are able to ask for this effect to be activated. Uh, and with that, everyone has picked their three choices for their leveling up. And so we can jump right into some scenes. Uh, we're going to mix things up a little bit today in the ways that you will see as we get to them. But uh, but at first, we're going to start uh, with visiting some of these choices and doing some scenes based on those. And I think I would like to start, because I think it's the biggest thing for me emotionally, with Riker visiting Ruby. So, um, so Ruby, following the events of the previous mission, uh, was part of a ranch that was purchased by the agency. And following your mission report, the agency knows that Ruby has spent enough time with duplicity to have sort of adopted its power. Meaning, Ruby is a very young resonant, like the three of you. As a result, mm -hmm. She has been admitted into Triangle Academy, a secret group of uh, students, very small classes uh, of kids who happen to have spent some time with anomalies and are now, uh, well, kind of not 
given a, another choice than to go to this school um, that is a, a bit of a boarding school for kids who have abilities like this or have uh, experiences with anomalies that for one reason or another cannot be um, erased. Uh, Those... Question question from mm -hmm. the chat. Uh, Keegan EXE wants to know, uh, what's her house? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, the good thing about Ruby is that she's in all of them, so it doesn't matter. Um, Ruby has. Oh my gosh! Yes. <laughs> it's a better um, answer. Okay, cool. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> Ruby uh, is is uh, able to participate in many classes at a time. And Riker, my question for you is: You would know about this. You know that she's gone to the academy. Um, we have passed some time. Is this a thing where you are visiting more than once, or do you think? you have like made a big production or, or put a lot of energy into one particular visit? I think, um, I think it's a little like column A, column B. Mm -hmm. In my mind, I would like it to be like when the invitation, invitation to join the Academy came, like Riker was part of like the team that went to the house to kind of like, say hey you're a special kid it's time for you to go to like this place um and it's been kind of like a slow like he's not ever been like overtly hey ruby or anything like that um but it's just kind of been around as she's joined the academy and kind of stepped into it um but i do think at some point there would be like a she did really well in a class or like it was like orientation day or something um Riker would kind of show up with a, a gift and again I think it's a hundred percent like a little stuffed lamb that he's like obviously uh like dyed in kool-aid himself so his hands are all like stained red and it's like already fading and it's kind of sticky like, <laughs> <laughs> um that's so sweet but, yeah like divorced dad vibes a hundred percent a hundred percent uh as he's trying to like you know, make make better on that interaction. So I think the what I wanted to highlight then is the first time that Ruby goes out of her way to talk to you. Um, you receive a uh, a message, an email actually from uh, from Ruby at uh, TriangleAcademy.gov, <laughs> and the um, the uh, she has asked you to come uh, visit with her. Um, on a day that she has kind of off, like on a, on a field day. Um, and when you arrive at the academy, which is in the middle of the city, it's like a, a, a building that has an entire block behind it of kind of greenery, but is like a pretty tall um, building kind of sitting very close to headquarters. Um, and she meets you out on what is effectively like a really large field and playground. Um, and when you walk up, she says, uh, that lamb you gave me was really gross. Yeah, I sorry, I just uh the YouTube said to like rinse it, but the more I rinsed it, the worse it got. I yeah. don't, I don't know what I did wrong. I shouldn't have listened to Tyler. He ins they insisted that if I put this special thing in there, uh it, it would fix it. I I don't think it did, but um that explains why it's a beeping at least. Yeah, I thought maybe it would sound kind of like a like a ba, uh, a little endearing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it just, you know, it, I would advise maybe don't sleep with it close to your face. But I don't know. Maybe maybe you should. It is who knows. Uh, she sort of shakes her head and she says, "Um, I um." I wanted to say, I think, uh, thank you. Because uh, based on what I've heard from some of the other kids here, um, sometimes they came here for reasons that were a lot more intense or scary. And I think that this place is kind of cool so I am still mad at you, but I just wanted to say um, thanks for for making sure that I was okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, you're you're a kid, and 
that's what adults are supposed to do, right? Is make sure kids are okay. And you're a cool kid. You're like the, one of the coolest kids I've ever met. Like I work with kids. I spend a lot of time with kids. Um, oh, sorry to, inter- in- sorry to interrupt you. I just have to do a math problem real quick. I'm in class. Oh, take your time. Seven, okay, 98, okay. 47. Oh, sorry. no, stop it. <laughs> stop. I am having to write it on the board. Uh, and then <laughs> after a second, she says, okay, okay, I got it. Right. I, I mean, I think it's pretty cool that we might get to work together. You know, like I, I think we made a pretty good team, all things considered, solving that first little deal. Yeah, I'm learning how to do some of what she did by myself, which I didn't know that I, I could do. Yeah, it kind of works like that. Like weird stuff happens and then you've got cool stuff that you can, well, cool, weird, gross, you know, and there's a lot of words. Uh, anyways, uh, I, I, are, you, are you liking it? Are you doing well? Uh, yes, yes, I'm doing a good job. Um, I just, I was thinking about how you gave me the stupid smelly sheep and I wanted you to know that I wasn't, um, that I'm glad that I'm here right now. That's, that's really cool of you, Ruby. That's, that's cool. I like that. Thank you. Um, and at, uh, she sort of like waves and has to go back to class, um, but at this moment, you receive a phone call from uh, another person in your life, uh, Piper. Piper, uh, for those who do not know, is your older sister who is played by Petty. Um, your sister who you live with um, and who you have not been necessarily keeping up with rent. Uh, Piper, you have heard of a big public job fair in the financial district that it would just be really, really good if Riker went to. Oh, hey, Riker, how you doing? Hi, <laughs> I, hi. Yeah, uh, good pipes. Good. Uh, good. I'm just uh, I'm a very and I'm in a very busy place. It's just kind of hard to kind of hard to make you out. <laughs> He's like, yeah. Um, no, no, that that's great. So I got a job that I think is gonna work great for you. Oh, you have a a, a yep a, financial a, district a, above board, totally good. Uh, I think you know how I feel about uh boards. Um, actually, <laughs> it's against them, them turns out above, above yeah. board. You're not the board. Above. You're not under it. It's above board. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, right, right. Uh yeah, and you said it was you said it was in the residential district. I will make sure to financial. Go there. Yeah, I, do, well, do you have I, an notepad? Oh, would, you need to I be writing this be down. Compensated. Uh, oh, sorry. What is in oh, the wow. financial? It's a job above board in the financial district. Here's yeah, a question Piper. for the two of you, Piper. Yeah. What is the big sister card? The thing that you have. The like, Ooh. the like, play that you hold on to and you only pull out in the like the moments where it really matters that you can pull here on Riker. That's a great question. And either of you can answer that if you have a good idea. But I'm just wondering what what is the best leverage that you as a big sister can pull? Listen, if you've got an idea, I, okay, I came and got you. When you when you went to that party that I told you not to go to, I went and got you in my A to B car and made sure you got <laughs> home before mom and dad woke up. All I'm asking right. you to do is mm-hmm. go to an interview. That's what I ask. I I went out of my way to help you. Okay, okay, I'm okay. Help right. you more. Right, right. Yeah. Okay, 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 okay. Okay. Gerald was on his last legs, and I looked right, yeah, him to go get uh-huh. you. I know. Yes. Rest, rest, rest in peace, Jerry. Or all gone, but not forgotten. Clearly. Okay. All right. Uh, fine. All right. More. Fine. A job above board, uh, financial district. Is there like a person I need to talk to, or can I just show up and they'll be like, "Hey, right, this is, it's you." Uh, what this is is a job fair. So no, there's no plan. Piper, you have you have led. Riker to an open job fair to meet with various companies in the FIDA. 
Listen, you're ingenuitive. You'll figure it out. Just look for somebody important. Ask for a job. Uh, oh, okay. Are you saying I should dress suggestively? I don't understand. And there is a full hang up <laughs> as you are as you are uh, sent off to uh, Pythagoras Park in the financial district. Um, and around this same time, I would like to move over to Tylar. So Tylar, a uh, a thing that you did, this is petty, we're, getting, we're putting you right back uh, in the hot seat on this one. Um, a thing that you did was spend time with Elvis, the right. kid that we visited uh, last session and left off with a, uh, you know, a really important piece of information about interacting with people you are romantically interested in. Um, so I am curious, the time that you spent with Elvis in between last mission and now, uh, how did you seek that out? What did you do? With you know, kid? so I, call, I called <laughs> I called Elvis over. I was like, mm-hmm. hey buddy, do you, do you remember the, the talk we had the other day? Oh, uh, I, I mean, uh, maybe I, 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 I have been talking at girls. Okay. And it's, uh, you know. And do you remember what I told you, how I told you to talk to, to women? To, to, to just like, um, to just like keep talking no matter what. Uh, say again. And I'm going to go ahead and use one of my whisper powers here. <laughs> <laughs> This is what I've been waiting to do, Caleb. <laughs> this is so good. I'm ready. <laughs> um, remind me how dice rolls work in this game. Yes. So uh, you are using an ability, say again, which calls out a particular quality. Um, you're going to roll 6d4. As long as you have at least one in that quality, there's no penalty to this roll. You mm-hmm. are just looking for how many threes there are among those 6d4. The things that aren't threes turn into chaos for me. The things that are, as long as there's one of them, uh, turn into successes and sometimes threes you can spend for additional powers within that ability. Um, in your case, with say again, uh, I believe you can add additional sentences, but we'll see based on what you roll. Yeah, okay, cool. Um, I'm going to go ahead and roll that and let me just transition. Uh, cool. So I rolled two threes and then uh, four things that were not threes. Great. So I will get four chaos unless. For Sagan's quality, if you spent one point, you can make it stable by having three threes, and I wouldn't get any chaos. Um, K-A-S. yeah, K-A-S. I'll K-A-S. absolutely K-A-S. spend the one point. I don't want to give you chaos in, <laughs> in the. No. I don't want to give him chaos in the pre-mission, right? Yes. Um, which no. seems fair. So I'm gonna take a point. It's just it cost me one point, right? Yep, one point to bump it up to three, and because three threes is stable, it creates no chaos. Okay, cool. Uh, I'm going to drop, honestly, a point from professionalism because it, well, it feels... has to be from that particular skill. So Never whichever mind. one, say again, is four, that's the one you have to drop. Yes. The one, say again, is four is presence. So I will Great. drop the one point from presence. Um, I just leveled that skill. <laughs> um Great. Yeah. But yeah. Um, the chaos. so at Tricendence, I can speak... T- that's Triscendence, five three threes, right? Or is it just yes, stable? Yes, but it, it's only if it's a natural three threes that it's Triscendence. If you bump up to it, it's just stable. Okay, cool. In that case, then, uh, I'm going to say, say again, and then this new target, this new sentence is the thing that Elvis believes um, he said, which is, I should work on myself uh, so women find me more interesting and I can stop trying so hard. <laughs> and then I just shake my head a little bit, and I'm like, "Yep, that's that's exactly the, what I wanted you to leave this place with." I'm 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 glad you learned that. Uh, and just to fully call out what happened there, the ability say again allows you to take something someone just said to you and change it to something else they believe they said. Yeah. Um, and since you have two additional threes, what is the additional threes for say again? Um, it is just on a success, on a failure, and on transcendence for that ability. Oh, on transcendence only. Okay, I yep. see. Um, then, uh, yeah, so this changes, and now we move forward, Elvis, with you believing you were told to work on yourself. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, uh, I mean, I've been, uh, d- doing, you know, uh, arm curls. Yeah. And, uh, and push-ups, and standing six feet away from girls. You know? It's going well so far. I bet. No one's thrown anything at me. I bet the women in your life are loving this. 
as uh, the you <laughs> nod, I'm imagining we're back in Tyler and uh, Riker's living room again during this conversation. Yeah. Uh, and there's a knock on your door. We're going to have a scene with three people in it because Mayri has arrived, being played by Sarah. Mayri is the, uh, the fellow Martian who has uh, come here as well with Riker. Mayri, you uh, work at a flower shop, which has been established before, and you have been asked to help decorate a professional enrichment conference in the financial district, uh, and you need help because your flower shop is operated by you and one other person, and they are sick. Hello, normal human sister, Mayri. Hello, Ty Lar. Are you able to discuss openly plans for this evening? No, you see, normal human child friend, Elvis, is here. Is Elvis? <laughs> Elvis is doing <laughs> curls right currently. now. Elvis is working yes. on himself, so women find him less repugnant. Uh, Mary's eyes will track just the dumbbell in his hand, <laughs> like, watching it. Is this some sort of engagement ritual? Is it, is it working? Do, do, does she like me? I. This is a good sign so far. Yes. Hello, though, Mary. You you've come here for reason. <laughs> Mary kind of like rubs her eyes and steps in. Um, <laughs> I like that you were outside the door for all of this. Yes. Yeah, a hundred percent, hundred percent. Door's didn't still step open. In the door. Yeah, she's gonna step inside uh, and look around uh, the apartment, like her nose wrinkling a little bit. I have a task for us to complete. I believe that by doing so, we will gain resources enabling us to take that trip we've been talking about. Yes. <laughs> the trip we've both been very interested in taking. The only trip that matters to me at all. Yes. <laughs> Continue. I believe that I was supposed to gain capital from attending a professional soiree of some kind. Did you know soiree is different than sorbet? That explains confusion I had with Riker. It does. <laughs> what, what, what kind of sorbet does she like? What, what kind? I believe she likes normal human flavor of raspberry. Oh, okay. How do you? Got it, got it. How do you two normally communicate? What's the normal way? Is this it? Or is there, is there I a, a Martian way of talking? I feel like it's like this? this, but slightly less coded. I feel like she would just normally say, hey, I'd like to go home. Uh, yeah. Instead of go on the trip. But I feel like that's honestly the only bit that's changed. Mm -hmm. uh, 100%. Sarah, we're killing I Caleb. I'm going to live, live there forever. <laughs> um... <clears throat> I was supposed to have an assistant, however, some sort of illness, disease, uh, calamity has befallen their physical form, and they are unable to attend. Will you help me in a, this exchange of capital? I believe afterwards we can finally afford to fix the old car that we own. <laughs> yes, the normal human hatchback we are in possession of that does not currently drive. Could be fixed. Yes. Um, I will consider your proposal, Why is he sister. doing that with his hands? <laughs> Are you not impressed? Does the, he require medical assistance? Uh, uh, no. Do you remember the age back home when... when when the others would turn the age and things got strange. Have you checked him for new tentacles? <laughs> <laughs> okay, sister, I believe right. it's time for you to leave. I will call you no, on I, cellular I, I device. I like sorbet too. I like... Oh. Uh, the door is shut on yeah. that. Uh... <laughs> Mary is going to hand, like, as you're rushing out, like, is going to hand you a paper that has, like, 
I'm sure it's just full Martian writing on it that is very much like, go to here, and there's going to be a small note at the bottom that just says, not to worry, but maybe on several agency watch lists for Google for trying to buy uranium. <laughs> I feel like based on the way that the Martians are shaping up, the, the Martian language is like you've drawn one single perfect circle on the <laughs> page. Yeah, 100%. All the information is communicated. It's just, it's actually just a spiral and we read it like a record. Just run your finger across it a few times. 100%. That, that's the much cooler version of what I said. That's so cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's good. Um, a strange man yelled at me for trying to buy uranium. <laughs> okay, sister, not in front of the human child. Goodbye. I I'm just going to close the door on you at this point. <laughs> and uh, we are now going to jump <laughs> to a totally different part of town. Um, a uh, a place a little nicer, a little posher. We're in downtown where all of the uh, the stars congregate if they're going to get any meals at all. Layla, you have gone out of your way to spend some time with Monet. Monet being someone we did not meet last time, but who has, uh, who you know was at the event at Lil Ruby Ranch uh, previously. What inspired you to reach out to Monet? Um, well, I mean, since she was there, Mo um, Layla is kind of hoping to get more like background information about Rancher because we have the documents showing like the sale and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So trying to see if there's any other like thread she can uh, pin down, and also trying to figure out how Monet got an invite, and she didn't. You know, just <laughs> definitely more the agency part. Definitely not motivated by uh, spite. Um, I think that makes perfect sense. And Monet, you, uh, what is your favorite place to hang out and bring friends? And remember, you are a big star these days yeah for your duolingo sponsorship that you've not locked down yeah 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 i'm i'm big on tiktok um and i think to that end there's like a really trendy uh i honestly i think we've already established that sorbet is important so um, yeah. i think it's a really <laughs> trendy sorbet shop in town um it's more important to be seen there than it is to actually eat the sorbet because it's kind of bad yeah making things even worse it's called the sorbet soiree <laughs> amazing <laughs> <laughs> adding to Martian oh, confusion no. all throughout town. Um, and uh, Monet, I'm not sure how you feel about this, so you can decide. But you have been asked to invite, part of why you were willing to hang out with Layla is that you have been asked to do a duo event with Layla. A duo lingo a, event. A duo lingo, <laughs> duo lipa, double <laughs> lingo event. A, du a, du a dual linguist, duo lipa. <laughs> wow. Uh, Too many. At, uh, at a professional enrichment conference uh, in uh, Pythagoras Park uh, later today. And you have not invited Layla yet, but you're supposed to. Cool. Um, so I think we see Layla come in and I'm like, hola, Layla. Layla. Hola means hello. You or your phone, like eight emotes, like immediately come up with hearts. Like, oh my God, thank God. I've always wondered. Oh, it's uh, it's so it's so lovely. It's so lovely to see you as usual, Monet. Yeah, I love seeing you. I love seeing her. She's my friend, my amigo. Amigo means friend. Uh, everybody's like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's so, what it's like on TikTok. I think. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Um, everyone's calling me mother in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <Very good. laughs> um, You're right. <laughs> Dangle and Amiga. Um, I think they're calling you madre at this rate. <laughs> I hate that. Um, okay, cool. Um, so, Layla, I was I, I wanted to invite you to a Duolingo, Duolinguist, Duolipa event. <laughs> That that's an awful lot of D's in there. Is all the alliteration quite necessary? We love alliteration. I thought that was your whole thing. I was doing it for you. I like alliteration. You see a couple comments. You're able to catch these out of the corner of your eye, Layla. The comments on um, the this video that's currently being filmed live uh, have uh, some people being like. Yeah, I thought she liked alliteration. What is she doing being so mean to Monet? Like immediately oh. you can see it sour. 
I thought alliteration was your whole thing. That's alliteration. <laughs> you know what? You're right. Let let me not be a lemon Lucy. That's your Thank whole thing. Thank you so much, mi amiga. That means friend. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, and uh, you. Uh, uh, Monet, you have been given, uh, you specifically, because you uh, were asked to reach out to her directly, you have the like information and contract uh, with you for this event. And when it is passed over to you, Layla, you see it is a very large amount of money. Well, all, oh, well, all right. That, that is quite the, uh, that's quite the mood lifter. Um, can we say money in Spanish? That would be dinero. That is dinero. Good job. You're very good at translating, and people like you a lot. They say it all the time. That's Layla Laurie on TikTok and Instagram. Uh, your phone starts blowing up. Just this this brush with Monet uh, already as the, the live uh, finishes um the uh you start getting a bunch of, of buzzes and notifications as you get additional followers and i just have a question before we move on monet when your live is off what are you like that implies a very unreal thing about monet which is that the live is not off it's not oh it's never it's off. never off we keep the live on it's what i'm paid for that's great that's beautiful. We'll never see the truth. We'll never. You'll never know. So each of you has been for a uh, a different reason invited to the Turnian City Financial District, where this big professional enrichment conference is uh, going on at Pythagoras Park. This part of town has an old park and cemetery that were preserved when this place began uh, kind of the urbanization process. And there's this like really clear rectangular boundary around this vast uh, park and this uh, large um, old cemetery that has not had anybody added to it in a very long time. Directly at the edge of all of those things are very large office buildings that all host the equivalent of Turnian City's Wall Street. The uh, the finance uh, office buildings, the a uh, couple of businesses uh, that are around there, and all of these places, these enormous companies, are participating in what amounts to a very large party. It is technically a uh, professional enrichment event. There are some outdoor stages with uh, people giving uh, talks. There is an area with tents that have um, uh, all uh, been given like little booths for different businesses for this job fair. And that is where I would like to start us uh, is in the job fair area. Um, Riker, this place smells. From the second you arrived in the park, there is this like awful um sour smell in the air this like kind of really really disgusting smell that everybody you can tell is noticing and you can see some people talking about it trying to figure it out but it is like hovering over the whole air of this park Ooh. uh and is everybody here with me we're kind of like are we gathered i uh would love for us to run into each other sure okay cool um, cool um i think uh Riker, like once it starts uh, smelling, like, I think he's going to have a moment where he's afraid that it's him uh, and is <laughs> going to kind of, like, look around and try and make sure uh, that everyone's experiencing this. Um, and then he is going to kind of uh, <laughs> do the shirt thing where he holds his shirt over his face and take a deep breath. Uh, and it's just going to start power walking from uh, booth to booth. Um, recognizing that this is an opportunity for him uh, to tell uh, Piper later that, yeah, man, it, uh, it just it kind of stunk. Like it wasn't it wasn't a great turnout. Like ask anybody that it was a pretty pretty stinky uh, affair. As you walk through this place too, you're seeing these places are like uh, Marcos Analytics, Variance Holdings, Extraction and Distribution Limited. None of these places sound cool or uh, especially attached to Riker's interests as I know them. Um, they all sound like very uh, intense, like big business 
uh, interests. Yeah, I think if he sees Marcos, though, that might kind of stop him for a second because his uh, mentor had mentioned um, something oh, yeah. Marcos. Ex excuse me, Muros. That's I, I said Muros. About Muros. Gotcha. Yeah, Muros. Muros, yeah. Um, so I think he might stop and look at that particular booth for a second, like assuming that it's some sort of he's he kind of does that thing where the words are mindlessly like looping through his head and then he you know muros tech job fake app that he's developing oh shit and he's gonna turn and look at, as soon as at, you look at this there is someone at this desk he's sitting at the desk he has um this uh this like uh short uh red hair he is uh wearing these like perfect expensive glasses he's got a clipboard sitting in front of him on this table and nothing else the second you look at him it is like uh like a like a puppy lighting up with a smile and he says uh oh hello uh are you here to talk about working for miros analytics uh i mean sure uh and Riker will kind of move over to the like the uh, booth and look around uh, what what is this exactly like analytics for what well christina Miros has a wide variety of holdings across a wide variety of uh, businesses and companies she uh, recently purchased a social network and as a result we have uh, put together a an entire uh, organization dedicated to the study and analysis of the uh effects and uh and posts and people on those networks and then we sell that data but if you don't mind me saying so you look um actually perfect for a job at miros in my opinion uh what I think he's gonna like tap his hair and like make sure and like look down and like because he is generally pretty disheveled mm -hmm. uh and he's gonna look uh what what exact like what what is that? Because I've never heard those words in that order my entire life. <laughs> it's just an air about you, a sense of humor, the way that you look. There's something to you that I can tell would get along really well at Miros. My name's Cameron, by the way. Hi, Cameron. Uh, do you have like a card or something like a newsletter I can sign up? I'm just not really looking to make any commitments, you know, as I am. Uh, that this, you've sensed a great candidate for a lot of different opportunities um <clears throat> yes absolutely actually this is embarrassing i forgot to schedule any one-on-ones and a lot of people here have a lot of things to do all day and i am just waiting here for things to do this is my card by the way he hands you a card it says um uh cameron uh just cameron and under it says professional assistant he says how about we just hang out oh uh riker is gonna kind of like hmm <laughs> have a moment where he's doing some mental like math of if I do this will this can I say that it's an interview will While that you appease think about Piper it, what are the other two of you doing because we, let's say you all let's say you you found each other in this crowd and you've all had your different things you have to get to eventually um but how are the two of you reacting to Riker's conversation right now oh what a question I I think the truth is Tyler's like, I'm a very normal looking human man. I don't understand how I haven't been approached for a human job. <laughs> um, and I'm personally stewing in it, but I am just standing completely straight faced, just like uncomfortably close behind Riker, <laughs> but not reacting. That's awesome. What about you, Layla? I mean, Layla immediately remembered like the... Oh, I'm gonna say, is it was it Mudros, Medros, Miros? Yeah, Miros. There we Can go. Can I get a spelling Mir on that really quick? M I R O S. Okay, Miros. Okay, Miros. Then being like, uh, although wait, I guess we don't in character know about the pan out to like. Um... But you would remember no. that she was at the ranch. She was mm -hmm. literally there during that day. Mm -hmm. gotcha. The CEO of this company. Right, like yeah, that's right. Like she she was the one in charge of the um, terrible go karts that Layla definitely didn't puncture on purpose. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so Lay Layla's kind of listening for more tidbits about that before she has to struggle through an event with Monet. 
That's perfect. As y'all are standing there, um, as soon as there is a look on Riker's face, like he's thinking about saying no, Cameron stands up and kind of swooshes around Riker to uh, the two of you. And is like, oh, and the two of you. Hello. I uh, Are you also looking for jobs? I'm happy to. Of course, you're not looking for a job. He looks at you, uh, Layla, and says, uh, I, I'm such a big fan. I love all of your videos. Oh. I do so love meeting fans. Amor in Spanish. <laughs> and can I say, the thing that I really like about you over, not that it's like a competition, but like over Monet, uh, who I love and who's great, is that I think you really care about the meanings behind the words and like the local cultures to them. And Monet is kind of like trying to teach everybody just like random vocabulary, which is fun, but it's like not useful to me, you know? I'm trying to learn languages. I, I'm 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 glad you I'm glad you appreciate it. Remember, learn languages and let loose. Yeah, let loose, learn languages. Um, that uh, order. She definitely would have said it right. Ignore me. I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and he turns he turns to you, Tyler, and says, um, "And hello, uh, hello." He nods back at you exactly the same, and he says, uh, "Wow, I haven't seen a hello like that." straight down the middle in a long time. Like it wasn't like you, were, I didn't feel like you were trying to get anything from me, but I also didn't feel like you were in a bad mood. I felt like you were like perfectly normal. I'm just gonna, <laughs> I'm going to open my mind to the thoughts of someone nearby and let their words roll out of my mouth. <laughs> uh, um, <laughs> I have an ability called tip of the tongue. Um, yes, yes. So if I roll empathy, I can say what the target wishes they were saying right now. Um, because I something something about this man just doesn't seem right to me. Um, and I would know because I'm a very normal human man. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and roll 64 real fast. I have mm -hmm. a plus three in empathy. And <laughs> Why am I so bad at rolling? I got not Did a single. Did you get sing zero? I got zero. Okay, oh, so no. that's okay. It's not a failure it, because you have points you can spend. So you can spend a point and nudge that into a success. You'll go down to uh, two points, and I will have uh, five chaos. But you could do that, or you could spend all three and make it stable. It's up to you. So here's the deal: is the fail on this is actually so funny. Um, no, which it's is up to you. No. On a failure, you admit something you don't want anyone to know. Um, so <gasps> I yes. think I think I'm just going to I, I think I'm just going to consider failing here. Uh, right. Giving you six points six of chaos. chaos. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, so I'm gonna write down the six chaos real fast, and then, uh, cool. Uh, yeah. So I, th <laughs> I think, I think what happens here is he's like, you know, this is like a real normal greeting, and I'm like, thank you so much. I'm not from Earth, and you know, it's it's learning the local customs has been very hard for me. Uh, uh he it, completely in stride looks at you in the eyes as you say this, and says. That sounds really tough. It's been a... Yes, you should continue speaking to Riker. <laughs> I have to ask, because my burnout release is if I learn something new about my dependent. I don't feel like I learned anything new, but I'm going to ask anyways. Well, my question is, did you know Tyler felt like it was tough? I don't know if I did. Like, I, I, I'll lean on Keegan to answer that. I think that Riker didn't really, hasn't really thought about how Tyler feels because Tyler never talks about their feelings. Yeah. So I think that, like, Riker's just kind of assumed that he's just a weird dude, weird dudeing it up. Yeah. I should mention real fast. Um, I do get <laughs> a demerit every time I talk about my feelings. <laughs> So uh -oh. you do also, yeah, you do. Get so a I do, I do fail. Yeah. I immediately get a demerit. Um, and yeah, no, I never talk about my feelings. Um, yeah, so that would mean so this that's is burnout release clear. for you. Yeah. Yeah. So I have a burnout release. Yeah. So the goodness. next time burnout would arrive for you, you're able to ignore it. Um, uh, so you you get this reveal. Um, Cameron responds to that uh, by saying that that sounds really hard, and then turns to the three of you and says, um, "Gosh, this must be so boring for for all of you. This place is so like uh, stodgy." But the one question thing is that Dua Lipa is coming later. I don't think it's for very long, but she will be here for a little bit, which is uh, that's like what I'm looking forward to personally. 
Um, oh, speaking of which, and he like looks at his his watch and he says, uh, Layla, isn't your event coming up soon? Don't you have to go meet Monet at the main stage? Oh no, I'm going to I'm going to be late. Uh, thank thank you very much. I I appreciate it. What is happening with this accent? I give up. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> I think it makes perfect sense that her accent would would move around. <laughs> I, you know what? Thank you for rolling with that. Uh, yeah, I was just like, all right, I will, I will see you all later. Ta -ta. Uh, and so you Bye have now. to head over to your event with Monet. Cameron turns to the other two of you and says, uh, "Do you want to go watch? I've been waiting for this like all day." Y you, you go on ahead there, pal. Um, I'm gonna. Look around some some more. Uh, Ty Tyler, what, what do you what do you want to do, buddy? What's the normal response here? <laughs> I think that was it. Hikers, right? <laughs> <laughs> like, gonna look at you like I'm drowning. Help me! <laughs> As you say that, like, oh shit. <laughs> He says, uh, he, Cameron, completely, as you say that, laughs like it, you have said something very, very funny. And then uh, sort of waves and goes toward, uh, to kind of jogging off after Layla. I, Riker, I'm going to be honest. I feel like the usual human response is people, people seem to like do a Lipa. So I feel like maybe we should go to the stage. Yeah, a hundred percent. I was gonna go, but not because that guy asked me to, because he's weird. That guy, not no, nobody's that happy. I don't know what is the deal, but right. no one Humans is that happy. No one is that friendly. Aren't happy. Well, uh, okay. I mean, you know what? Where's the lie? Write it down. Uh, no, it's not not PPI. That's a Y. Remember, we talked about this. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Why well, you got to stop making them weird circles too, bud? That's nobody can read that. I mean it. <laughs> You, Sounds like you, you knew I used to, to take a leap of faith. <laughs> uh, and thank you so much. That's been levitating. <laughs> uh, and she waves uh, and turns uh, to uh, head off stage as after the Dua Lipa uh, comes the Duolingo Duolinguist portion of the event. Uh, and Monet, uh, you are the first to arrive and are. are uh, responsible for introducing Layla. How do you do that? Yeah. Uh, gracias to Dua Lipa. That means thank you, Dua Lipa. What? The crowd says. Anyway. It's a, bunch of, it's a bunch of, like, men in business suits mostly, but they do seem, like, really into Monet's. Uh, I do still deal. have my phone out the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> I am still live streaming. Anyway, I'm so excited to introduce my Migo. That means friend. Uh, Layla, come on out. Woo! Hola, everybody. Hola means hello. Oh my gosh. It sure does. The people on this live stream are leaving with a real good, very basic understanding of Spanish. Hey, we're um, maxing out my understanding of Spanish. So. We've, hit, we've hit the edges. Um, so uh, the uh, immediately following comes uh, what I have to imagine is the most interesting and riveting uh, performance of live uh, language conversation. Um, and this crowd is like super, super engaged. People are really, really happy about it. But it is like impossible to ignore this like awful smell every time you're not distracted there is just this like wave of this like horrible uh stench uh and during this event uh you see that a bunch of the workers of this conference have begun lifting tents and are moving uh off kind of to the east um towards the graveyard with their tents like they're moving to try to set up somewhere else question Okay, so I, I, I know the agency frowns upon uh, power usage mm -hmm. uh, in public in particular, but what if I just did it anyway? <laughs> so to answer your question, the, the thing that the agency cares about are what's called loose ends. These are actually a mechanic in the game that we didn't have to deal with much last time because you didn't run into a lot of people. But in a crowd like this, if you use a power that allows anybody to see that something that is not normal, something that is paranormal uh, or anomalous in nature is happening, they become a loose end. 
And before the end of the mission, you have to either convince them that they didn't see that or eliminate the possibility that they tell anyone else or you will receive loose ends, which can cause problems uh, for you in relation to the agency. And in the full game can unlock uh, the agency actually uh, punishing you. What if they think it's part of a show? Then as long as it's an actual cell in that way, then it doesn't count as a loose end. Perfect. So as part of the language, uh, dis you know, show display everything, because uh, Monet is a fan of theatrics and whatnot for a live stream. You know, it'd be great for her live stream because Layla kind of wants to know where the smell is coming from. And the easiest way to do that is to float anything that might be obscuring it uh, out of the way. Okay. So what is your, what are you thinking you want to do? So I'm thinking I would like to do the, um, the guy or the gimbal. So yeah, Onyx success. You change the direction of gravity up to 90 degrees in the direction of your choosing. If you're in a room, it affects only that room. If you're outside, it affects your percent. Like, for your voices with Dua Lipa, feel lifted by it. And roll this guy or the gimbal. Okay. Cool. All right. So you're going to roll for guy or the gimbal. What is the quality you roll with guy? Professionalism. And do you have professionalism points? I do. Great. Then you won't have any penalty for this roll. And by I do, I just realize, I mean, I don't. I was thinking of <laughs> for distance. Okay. That so is have, my bad. <laughs> so you have zero, which means you'll have minus one on this roll. That's okay. It's, it's fine. It's fine. What so are the six odds? So you roll 6d4, and we'll see what, what happens. What are the odds? <laughs> try, try sentence. Oh, ah, nice. gosh. Perfect. That's Why am I the only one who can't roll? <laughs> So even from losing one, uh, Triscendence is not cancelable. So it's stable. I don't get chaos. And uh, ah. you uh, you get a, uh, no, a choice of either recharging <laughs> quality assurances, which you don't have to do right now uh, because you haven't used them. You can have any number of threes, which might matter for the uh, guy or the gimbal ability. You can look at that and see because there's always a secondary thing you could spend threes on. Or you could get three commendations right now, which you can spend later on things at the agency. Okay, let me double check. I the, we'll know. What I get with more threes on Guy the Gimbal. Let's see. For each, it's an effect to single target, such as yourself, at 90 degrees. Yeah, so right now the situation is everybody is going to be shifting to the side. You can turn this into any number of threes. So you have like basically perfect control over gravity in this moment. You can pick who moves, you can pick who floats, and they can go upwards, they can go sideways, sit however you'd like. Okay. Um, in if that, you pick that option, you just won't get the the commendations for it. Um, and you know, if I isolate that, even like whatever it is, whether it be a person or object, kind of like she's trying to kind of like separate that out. So kind of, so if things go sideways, she can tell if the if the sense is getting stronger or weaker. Is kind of the thought. Yeah. So are you lift? You're are you picking up everybody still and moving them sideways or upward? Sideways. We can make it ninety. So sideways. Yeah. Oh, what I was saying is because you have any number of threes, you can make it. Anywhere. Oh, well, that's right. Okay. Uh, so where we'll so we'll say people are going up and <clears throat> objects slightly up and objects are kind of going sides. Yeah. Okay. So this is perfect. You push the objects in the direction that they're being moved by professionals anyway toward, and you are lifting these people upwards. They feel their gravity like shift and change. Uh, but you have a bunch of people here who uh, have just been primed by one of the most incredible songs ever, Dua Lipa's Levitating, and are, uh, and are uh, in a financial district, so they're extremely gullible. All of them are, uh, are floating upwards into the air. Uh, it's a very strange feeling how uh, your gravity shifts and you feel that sort of like lurching in your stomach, but everybody is so surprised that you don't see anybody get sick immediately. I, are you floating yourself up as well and Monet, or are you leaving the two of you down? Uh, we'll, 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 I'll also float myself and Monet to you know, make sure it's not very clear what's who's controlling this exactly. Wow, um, we're levitando. That means levitating. Nobody but hears you. Gonna... No. <laughs> <laughs> my phone is levitating, levitating slightly left. higher than everybody else. And I'm uh, levitating up because my phone's an that's object, true. Right? Um, so I feel like what you've actually done is also cut me off my, my uh, stream. <laughs> Yeah, just because I feel like that's the thing you would personally want to do. Oh, right, because I said objects are going sideways. Yeah, yeah. You don't have your phone right now. 
I want to take this moment to do a quick pause and warning to the people on the stream. Uh oh. This is a horror game sometimes, and we've had a very silly and emotional time. But oh, from this yeah. point forward, if you have a particular issue with gore or with um, <laughs> or with uh, things so such excited. as such as bones, oh, the bad smell. Okay. I mm -hmm. uh, I would like for you to uh, to just know that that's going to come up. So be ready for that, and that need to bounce if you need to. Um, but uh, from this point forward, it might get a little bit scarier and grosser than it has been in the past. As you are lifted up into the air, uh, you don't see a particular uh, thing that is causing this smell. It is permeating this whole space. So, so you don't find like a sudden pile of anything laying around. But what immediately grabs your eye is that most people are reacting with this like uh, surprise and this like twirling and these kind of gasps and screams. But there is one shape that was inside of a tent kind of uh, off to the side, hiding in the shadows. As soon as it is in the air, it changes. These wide wings unfurl out from the sides of it. And what appeared to be maybe a businessman off in the distance uh, is suddenly this like large winged fig figure with these dark shadowy wings. It, in contrast to the way the gravity is shifting, it adjusts almost immediately, and with a wing beat, it is diving toward the crowd. You see in silhouette, as the sun is sort of off behind you, the shadow of a figure with a long, pointed head, these these like uh, these claws in its hands, and within seconds, it has grabbed one of these business people, and their head is ripped fully off, blood flying across this crowd. I am spending three chaos to use an anomaly ability that typically costs 10. This is an ability called kill. A mundane life is ended regardless of defenses. I am only spending three because at this moment you receive a text message on your phone, all three of you, from the agency. Anomalous activity detected in your area. Warning Death anomaly, be extremely cautious when engaging. The, uh, this, I spend three of those points, this, uh, this businessman's head is ripped off and that the rest of their body is tucked underneath its arm. As your eyes adjust to the sunlight behind, you see this skull head, what looks to be like the head of like a raven, the skull head with these bloody, uh, tiny little teeth in it, and this humanoid body ending in these long, uh, bird-like limbs that is flapping in the air. It reaches out and it grabs Cameron. Oh. Um, hey, Riker. Um, so you know, I am new to this planet. Is this one of the normal human predators? Uh, Riker, like all the color has drained from his face as he like has this moment, like the phone, like still in his hand, where you know, like deadly anomaly, and he's watching as this thing's like picking up, like slow motion, picking up Cameron. Um, and he's gonna turn and look at Tyler and go, you gotta be shitting me right now, bro. <laughs> he's gonna look at it and point, like, no, that's not, that's Riker, not fucking normal. Have we not discussed, I, I, I don't defecate. A Riker is gonna just, like, look back at you and, like, it's too much to process. Um... Uh, and he's <laughs> going to, okay, this is going to be weird, I think. Um, he's just going to look at you and get confused. Are we all still levitating? So you two, from what I remember, didn't actually go into the crowd, right? That's right, yes. So since this range was not necessarily made much further than the bounds of this area, I think it is perfectly reasonable that y'all were far enough away that it wasn't until this thing started moving around with giant wings that you even noticed that something weird was going okay. on. Okay, cool. Um, uh, I want... Riker's going to grab Tyler and is going to start running, like, by the shirt strap, and it's going to start running towards... Uh, the anomaly leading <laughs> his hands. I forgot. I Don't worry, forgot. I did I not. <laughs> um, Practice, Stephen. 
and uh, he's just he's swearing the entire time. Shit, 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 shit. Um, and he's like trying to one handed open uh, apps on his phone as he's like running towards <laughs> this thing. Uh, and he, as soon as he gets into like ear distance, um, he's gonna like scream at this thing, like "Hey, hey!" to try and get its attention. Okay, uh, this is an, a good opportunity for me to kind of uh, push you to do a roll. You yeah. are trying to get its attention, which I think is not going to happen by bun- mundane means. You can use one okay. of your qualities and do a basic reality shifting roll to do something to especially get its attention if you'd like. Yeah, I want I want to reality shift. Like one of the objects nearby was a golf cart. Yeah. Like to help, like move, like get people through the fair. I want it to change to like, you know, the blues ladder truck, like from Arrested <laughs> Development. Yes, I want it yeah. to turn into one of those, uh, so I can actually be running up the ladder and like get that that height difference. So I'm like a figure, like not a part of the crowd, but above the crowd. I think that's awesome. So as this uh, this body tucked into one arm is like bleeding uh, from the neck, this other uh, these long claws have grabbed the back of Cameron's suit jacket and are just holding him. As r- the entire gravity has shifted upside down, so this winged figure is like flapping, holding itself in place upside down, with Cameron falling up. Uh, and Cameron looks terrified, like oh oh my god, oh my god. Uh, but the the beast turns and looks at you. You only see inside the hollows of this kind of large raven skull, but it looks at you uh, as you are at its level, as if it is uh, curious what you will do. Cool. Um, so, um, and you I should got... roll. You should do the roll real yeah. quick too. Yeah. Let me let roll. me know what the roll needs to be. I think this is going to be um, actually uh, dynamism because what you've done Perfect. is not is yeah yeah. That's what I wanted it to be because I'm a plus three there, and I have dynamism a is often physical stuff. It's like it's like can you uh, like uh, very dramatically do something like physical and acrobatic in sometimes that way? So you are like running up a staircase, like throwing yourself yeah. up there. Okay, here we go. Um, I got one three. Um, so you can I spend go... two dynamism, or I want to spend two okay. uh, to get transcendence. So it doesn't give you transcendence, but it does stable it. Oh, yeah, so I, that, yeah. yeah, stable. Okay. Yeah, super duper want that. Um, so no chaos so for me. Yeah, which means you're so still now I'm at down three. to one. Um, and then I, I want to scream at this thing. Sarah, no. Do you like Dua Lipa? Uh, uh, are you waiting for a response? I just need a head tilt. Like, uh, like I'm gonna give it like a just a beat. I'm so sorry to do this to you, but it yeah. does not seem to even understand what you're saying. I'm just gonna this this is all I've got. I'm just gonna scream, uh, would you like some more? And I'm gonna hit on Spotify. I was pulling up Dua Lipa's music on the phone and it's like blasting Dua Lipa from my little phone speaker at it. <laughs> like at the top of this ladder truck. With Cameron suspended in a bleeding body, <laughs> it just like screams out. Um, I've, yeah. I've got new rules. I've got them. Will you roll for this ability? Yeah, I will. Who knew Dua Lipa was going to be such a uh, important, important part of yeah, this episode? Uh, it is empathy. I have plus one in empathy now, which is good. Um, I got one, two, um, two threes. Um, I, I'll get four chaos or you can get rid of your one empathy to make it stable again but then, you, then you'll have burnout on any future empathy rolls um, and, but I have the burnout protector because I learned that uh, it's tough for um, yeah so the next time after this you will have the protection so if you want to spend it you'll get burnout next time but it will protect you uh, yeah I 100% up. I 100% want to uh, burn it and keep okay. this stable uh Will you read the success case for me? Yes. On a success, the target you are focusing on is very interested in more of the last thing they enjoyed, as identified by you and the holder of the character. This does not create an addiction or a compulsion, but makes that thing, if it's available, uh, into leverage or distraction far beyond its worth. 
So, my thought here was I have a phone that's making the sound. If I can throw that or move that away, that somehow it will want the phone. Yeah, I understand this path. Here's what I'm struggling with that we can negotiate yeah. over. I think the last thing it enjoyed was ripping the head off of a businessman. That's totally fair and valid. And that's the thing. <laughs> like, if this isn't going to work, it's not going to work. It's the only thing that I have. I don't know I, if it's like... What if it wants to rip Sarah's head off? <laughs> right. That's fair. It would have to drop Cameron. Yeah. So I, That's I, fair. I'll give you two choices here. One is, yes, we can have it change. It can, it'll go that target. I would like to kill someone and it'll aim at you. Or okay. you can think of another way to shift reality to make Dua Lipa the thing that it wants. It doesn't, you can tell that it is a little bit inhuman, but there might be a way to tie the Dua Lipa goal I and the song it's... into itself, but you will have to make another step for that. I think it's really, I think it's funnier if, and like way more interesting if we go with, um, I have presented myself as a different snack. <laughs> yes. Um, so I, I want to roll with that. Like it was, it is lost interest in Cameron, uh, but it has interest in Riker. I'm totally fine with that. The moment in this, you're like, please, please, would you like some more? You push this button, and then I think it's like dead silence for a second. And the moment Dua Lipa says one, it's like the it turns and locks eyes with you. Both of these bodies fall, and it, with a wing beat, spins like a corkscrew spin and dives directly at your face. Okay. Um, before we deal with that, I want to point out the two because uh, Layla, you've been on the on the. You've been you've held control over this gravity thing for this whole time, so you have access to that to dropping that in the meantime as well, and you can do anything you'd like to during this uh, moment. Yeah. Um, and I so has has the creature dropped the other two bodies at this point? Yes, which means they're flying upwards. <laughs> Line upwards. Okay. Uh, so I don't just want to suddenly turn the power off because then everybody's going to get horribly injured. <laughs> um, but can I? Because you have transcendence, I'll just say, like, because you got transcendence in this role, you have such, and you picked the one that gives you unlimited threes, you have such fine-tuned control over this moment that I'm not going to get in your way with almost anything you want to do with this effect. Okay, okay. Because I would like to, because I, I can see, okay, it's, it's dropped the bodies, it's, it's gunning for Riker. I'd like to control it to, like, the, like, so me and the rest of the audience are slowly being lowered down, and as, as it's head, as the creature's heading for Riker, I would like to very harshly, like, you know, change the gravity suddenly downward for that creature. Yes, Ooh. I think that's perfect. We see this, like, this corkscrew spin of this, like, uh, this, like, bone raven. This long arm with this, like, this, like, sharp claw gets, like, an inch away from Riker's face. And then with a slam, it hits the ground. Uh, and that will cut the end of your gravity ability as everybody sort of settles. This uh, creature, though, it's, like, scrabbling and trying to lift itself up. Tylar, what are you doing? Here's the problem for you, <laughs> Caleb. I am... A whisper and I'm a clown. <laughs> and I think in this moment I'm like Fuck, I can't do anything here. <laughs> I think I'm scrambling. Um I think what I'm going to do, um, because it's my job, is I <laughs> we're going to see Tyler run up on stage. <laughs> um and I'm going to dawn. I'm going to don yes. my fool's cap. Yes, it's, it's fool's cap time. time. Once permission, good. a new hat. Yes, I have a new hat for every episode. Um, but <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to don my fool's cap, and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna do some really bad stand up comedy up there that I think's really funny, and just hope to pull the crowd's attention from the horrific uh, murder beast out here. I think that's perfect. You want to give us one line? What is a Martian joke? Um, yeah. So. What's the deal with airline food? What's the deal with space line food? <laughs> uh, you, yes, you, you start saying that. And uh, you guys have a full minute now, the other two of you, um, have a full minute now where as soon as they hit the ground, some crazy stuff has happened, but everyone is turned and focused on uh, Tylar. The things I would highlight, the bird creature, the headless body. <laughs> Cameron um, is also locked now at the at the performance. I 
Um, okay. Hear me out, Petty. Because I have two ideas. And I'm, I I'm go, want to go with one. I can take care of the body, I think. Or I can try to take care of the body. By shifting reality. So it's like a weird like cardboard stand-in that like the head has come off if that makes sense so it's not a person it's like a cardboard person that seems to have been knocked over you know what i mean uh and shift that so if anybody looks at it again they're like oh wow it was really realistic it was just a cardboard guy or i can try and take care of the critter um How far does something have to be before it's not our problem as an anomaly? Now, the the three of you, as a result of this ping, have been assigned this anomaly as a mission. Dang it. So okay. it is now your That's responsibility, like period. Uh, okay, 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 okay. Can, what, what, what is, um... Because we were just kind of like at the financial district, kind of like middle of the of redacted city, right? Mm -hmm. And it's a very large crowd of businessmen. Yeah. But they're all distracted right now at the second. They are all distracted. Would it be possible? And I want to do a bunch of things and it's going to end poorly. Um, I'd like to be able to... Um, alter reality so there's like a mulcher nearby you know like those giant machines that you feed trees into to mulch mm -hmm. and then i would like to use my stitch ability to stitch like somewhere because if we're on a sidewalk i imagine there's like a there's like a line uh where the creature is so like a running mulcher a line where the creature is and stitch that to the to the to the feed part of the mulcher that i'm hoping is on yeah so will you just... read will you read the stitch ability to us so they know what you yeah. mean Yes, absolutely. So reading the stitch ability. So stitch. Uh, follows, just keep walking. Pick an edge you can see. Rooftops, doorways, tables, bricks, papers, etc. Within a minute, pick another. Roll subtlety. On a success, you connect those two edges. Visually, they remain in place, but spatially, they become directly connected. Something passing, moving, or stepping from one edge will move onto the other, no matter how visually distant they are. For each additional three, you can stitch more of these edges without breaking the first stitch, potentially creating a chain or loop. On a failure, you accidentally stitch yourself to the first edge, and any time you cross through a threshold, over a crack, or edge, you find yourself back at the first edge. This effect lasts for at least 10 minutes. So you are you are trying to take the sidewalk next to this creature, the anomaly, and mm -hmm. connect it to, you're saying you're hoping there's a wood chipper? I, I so I would like to alter reality. Yes, okay. there is a running like wood chipper, like again, the giant thing you yes. can feed things into. Oh yeah, I'm making so much chaos. The no, this is two perfect. Can be careful, I'm going for it. This is perfect. Amazing. This is two. Uh, so this is two rolls. Um, yeah. The first roll is reshaping reality, and since your other one is dependent on this going the way that you want, I want to start there. Um, what I would say for this is that this is also a dynamism because your goal here is violent. So this is also going to be a dynamism roll. How many points do you have in dynamism? You know, what, what, <laughs> what are quality assurance points, really? <laughs> um, so we'll be rolling yeah. at minus one. <laughs> yeah, minus one. Eh, whatever, whatever. I just have to roll transcendence and then it doesn't matter. That's exactly right. And I bet you will. Oh, man. Yeah! I yeah! Screenshot it! <laughs> yes, no awesome. consequences. Uh, no I'm accountability. Literally so bad. I'm so jealous. That's wild. <laughs> I yeah. cannot no, roll no, to save no, myself. Uh, for gosh, we're so. <laughs> what can you believe it? How lucky there is a wood chipper within eyeline, just a few uh, feet away. The, the the tents of this whole place have shifted a few feet to the side, and now uh, sitting right next to a beautiful ice sculpture that somebody set out for this event is a uh, a wood chipper uh, that Amazing. is running immediately. Uh, it's powering. You get three commendations because I think that's the only choice of the three that matters to you at the second. You get three commendations, and uh, you are now able to roll for stitch. And I don't remember what the quality is for that. I think it's that subtlety. That one is actually subtlety, yes. Yes. And you have subtlety now. Yes, I, I do have subtlety, so no minus. <laughs> so we'll do another roll. 64. 
That is only two threes. All right. So you can spend one of those subtleties if you want to make it so I don't get any chaos. I think or... I, I think I actually will in this case. Great. I was going to be chaos, but it's like, no, okay, fine. Yeah. <laughs> so you knock off one uh, and you are able to connect these two edges. So uh, as the uh, this anomaly is like like attaching its claws to the ground and like lifting itself back up, its wings are unfurling as it's sort of like shaking itself off from hitting the floor. You know that the step right behind it, that line in the sidewalk will lead it directly to the edge of the opening of the now running wood chipper. What would uh, the two of you now, because Riker, you can also step in to help here, like to do? Uh, I think I'm hoping that uh, she's got the, the critter like solved and where mm -hmm. that feels like it's a long ways from me, I'm gonna try and wrap up this other problem um, with the body. Um, I would like, to, so here's what I would like to do. I have a question. Yeah. Mundane target. Uh -huh. Is that just anything that's not an anomaly? Yes. Even something that the anomaly has affected can be mundane as long as it okay. is not itself anomalous. Okay. Um, and then uh, my next question is, do I have to be able to touch it or do I just have to know that it exists? Um, it depends on the okay. ability. Which ability are you talking about? So I'm talking about borrow. You may choose a feature of a mundane target and take it for yourself. Their face, yes. their voice, their love, their fingerprints. Now you have it and they do not. As a blanket rule, unless it says otherwise, you can only target things that you can see. But other than that, you're fine. Okay. I would like... And you don't have to literally be able to see it yet. It's more like there's like a, a range around you. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, my my question is, did I get a good enough look at like the guy before he got his head bit off? Like, I guess I can't see him anymore, but I can still see his body. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I would guess I would like to... This is what I'd like to do. I want to shift reality so the dead body on the ground is no longer a dead body. It's actually a, a cardboard stand-in. But I would like to borrow that body's features as I'm at the top of this thing so I can look at him, so I can turn to the crowd and be like, I'm okay. <laughs> like, it's like I was a part of the show. Oh, Does yeah. This sense? is great. We're doing so many roles. I love it. A double a double reality shift moment. That's the, that's yeah. the best. Uh, you okay. definitely can borrow this target's uh, features and whole look. Yeah. Okay. So I think the first thing would be to try and shift. My priority is make that body not a body anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yes, except that you can't do the other one second because then it won't gotcha. be a person anymore. Okay. So you have to Got do it. the, yeah. Ooh, I'm, I'm afraid. Okay, yeah, I'm going to roll duplicity. I don't have anything in duplicity, but I do have my burnout Just protection. It. It's fine. Uh, yeah, you've got okay. your password. I've got two threes. Two nice. threes. So uh, I'll get four chaos. Taking Perfect. me up to seven, I believe. And then, uh, yes, you, within a, an instant, like the second you have that thought, whoosh, you look exactly like this businessman. You've got um, his favorite tie. It's uh, it's actually a, a Charlie Brown tie that you see he's wearing. Amazing. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, I want to shift it so his body is not a body anymore it's just a like, it's a cardboard cutout that still looks like him if that makes sense like i sure. want i want to try and make this look like a guy had a booth that was like marketing at the job fair you know what i mean yes um, this is subtlety i believe yeah okay perfect i just put a point in subtlety today this is awesome okay oh and this one didn't roll i got two threes again so all right fours. so you can um, spin that subtlety if you want I'm going to save it. All right. I'm going to because I feel like I've spent a lot of my stuff and I don't want to get to the end and have a moment where I have no options left. So that yeah, takes me up to 11. Yeah, yeah. 11. That's not a big deal. We know killing someone's at 10. So. Yeah. But killing um, someone is was it was at 10 and is currently now it's three. at three. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I want that to look like the cardboard cutout. Um, and I want to. uh I, like, I don't know the timeline for these things, but if it's just finishing in time that, like, everybody's turning around uh, and looking at me, um, uh, uh, I want to, like, yell out something like, Haha, 
I'm George Georgerton, entrepreneur and now hiring. The, the work we do is so great, it, it'll blow your mind. I think and to, we're probably exactly. reaching the end of my act as this happens. And I'm like, yes, yes. this was all part of my act. Uh, smile and clap. And now I'm curious how loud this moment is in the background by asking <laughs> Layla, what did you do? What different <laughs> I so okay, the I so the target well should only be like stitched to like the mouth of the feeder if they touch the edge, right? So yeah, so like you would have to find a way to push basically this anomaly over the line on the sidewalk so that Tackle they pass it. into the wood chipper. Tackle it. I no. Um <laughs> <laughs> no, so what I wanted to do, because it, it still wants a fresh human target, um, I was going to have Layla cartwheel over it, so not touching the actual seam, but, uh, you know, like the crack in the thing, but like kind of cartwheel, like place her hands perfectly so that doesn't happen, and then go to a split right in front of it so the creature will step right up towards her to eat her, just like, just in. Yeah, you can go. You can go around the edge. I think if you cartwheeled over it, that would exactly push you into the because oh, okay. the, the edge is like. Imagine the edge upward now is like completely like oh, a, okay, a, gotcha, a portal. Gotcha. So yeah, you you step around it. I think that makes perfect sense. What I would ask for you, um, in order to to make sure that it focuses on you, this would be something like presence to like draw yes. its attention with something glittery or shiny or uh, something different from what it's been dealing with. Absolutely. So, okay, that I can do. All right. Okay, there's only two threes. All right, so that'll give me four. Uh, you have oh, some wait, oh, presence, right? I, I have some presence, so yeah. I will spend one to give to make it so it's a stable roll. Great, awesome. So you'll erase that presence. Uh, yep. And yes, uh, what is the most appealing thing about you to this anomaly now? What have you done to make yourself look extra worth killing? Uh, well, I think with all the like, with all the floating and whatnot, there's like an extra. There's like extra duke uh like like sparkling or sin uh, sparkling uh layla's skin mm -hmm. so it'd be like actual like kind of something like juicy or whatever just like glistening yes i think uh as soon as it sort of recovers and shakes off it looks at you and there's a bit of it that can understand as well that you made this uh this gravitational shift that hurt it and as you make yourself look extra appealing it dives forward at you teeters across the line in the sidewalk and from everyone nearby it just vanishes but from its perspective a second later it leaps 10 yards off to the side and tumbles into a wood chipper this grinding happens as up front Tylar finishes uh an introduction and you Riker are saying about how you are uh hiring up behind yeah. go ahead yeah we are a very uh, cutting edge display and special effects company. Do you want to design really cool graphics and visual think, effects? Come work at George George. <laughs> I think as it goes through the, as this is happening, it, it I assume this is like a uh, like full horror movie firing blood out the end of the wood chipper at this point. Uh -huh. Yes, um, and feathers, dark feathers in this blood. Which is to say, I am now going to try to, <laughs> to manipulate reality. <laughs> because I failed yes. every single role I've made so far in this game. I don't, I don't know if that's been it. clear to everybody, but I have not succeeded on a role yet. Um, I think it's fantastic. And, and I, I really would like that to happen. You. So I what would like to manipulate reality so that instead of blood and feathers shooting out of this, it's just like red glitter. We're just going like full <laughs> stage show here. Um, yes. No, that's totally possible. I would call this professionalism because you are trying to, uh, to keep something uh, like... Uh, Yes, I think professionalism is what I would go for here. Perfect. I have a plus three in professionalism, so I'm going to go ahead and roll. Okay, yes, I got always under pressure. a single three. Um, I'm going to just go ahead. I'm I'm tired of Caleb having chaos points. I'm going to burn two points of professionalism <laughs> to just make that stable. <laughs> All right. Um, this, uh, this is going to... Uh, 
uh, to, to, to completely transform what is flying out of the back of this. The blood and the feathers shift into this beautiful, um, this glitter and also just like streamers of these, yeah. like, fake plastic feathers um, flying out of the, the wood chipper. Uh, big and beautiful and showy. Um, and you receive a, uh, a ping to your phones that says, uh, minor anomaly destroyed. Oh anomaly no! <laughs> it's still, Dua Lipa's uh, the major anomaly. Yeah. I got it. Okay, cool. So as this goes on, um, uh, Tyler, still up on stage, is going to be like, um, and with that, we have Dua Lipa back to do her encore performance of Sweetest Pie. Dua Lipa! <laughs> <laughs> Dua Lipa, who's been backstage <laughs> watching this happen, uh, is coming out a little, a little um, discombobulated. She has seen uh, now this 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 show of stand up comedy that well, must have been terrible, but she loved it. She uh, she's seen all this wild stuff happen that she doesn't really she's not really worried about right now. She stumbles out and uh, begins. Her performance, um, and I think that might be a good time for a break. Y- one yeah. sec, as as she comes out to to do the performance, I assume she says something before. I need to tie up some loose ends here. Yeah, <laughs> I I assume she says something before she starts uh, her actual uh, you know uh, song or whatever. Yeah, she says um, she says uh, uh, yeah. Thanks so much to Tyler for that incredible introduction. I'm sorry. Say again. There we go. <laughs> yes. Um. And uh, so, let's uh, roll. Say again. Yeah, let's roll. Say again. Um, and then we'll figure out what I say uh, afterwards. And I know. Okay, cool. Hear that? Thank you, boys. Um, cool. So we're gonna roll again. Say again. Sorry, I have so many tabs open. Um, which is we're rolling presents again. <laughs> um, and how are you doing on presence points? You know, I have two left. Um, and that's great. Um. So, so I rolled a single three. Uh, I'm gonna blow my two presence points um, to make it stable. All right. Um, and the thing I'm gonna say. So on a success, the target uh, believes the new sentence is what they meant. Um, and what <laughs> Dua Lipa instead is going to say is, "Thank you so much, Tyler, uh, and thank you, audience, for joining me in the filming of my new Sweetest Pie music video. This one's for you." And then she's, uh, then she can go into her song. You see her. The cameras follow as she leaps over to the side and goes and dances in the red glitter <laughs> as it falls. Oh and my god! Fall, and they get a beautiful oh. shot that becomes the most famous shot of the music video for Sweetest Pie. Um, which already has a music video and it's really it's good great, honestly but I it's love not it. this yes. one <laughs> yeah and it is a spectacle megan um, is still good in that whole video it's incredible uh yeah. with that though i think we should go on break <laughs> yes, yes. See you I, think, I think as as dua lipa dances in some uh previously blood glitter um we're gonna we're gonna go on a five real quick um so we'll be back everyone uh.
Thank you for calling Triangle Agency. All of our agents are currently assisting other callers, but your call is very important to us. Please stay on the line and your call will be answered in the order it was received. Your current place in the queue is 313,504, and your estimated wait time is 12 years, 6 months, 14 days, 8 hours, 4 minutes, 13 seconds. In the event you cannot wait, please visit us at hauntedtable.games to see if we can help you out on our helpful forums. Hey, we're back! Uh, welcome! <laughs> we're back with Triangle Agency. Uh, we, I'm very briefly playing a Sweetest Pie remix in the background, but I'm talking over it so that we don't get copyright oh, strike. <laughs> um, so yeah, we're back! <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, hello and welcome back. Um, in the uh, in the Sweetest Pie, the sweetest moments right before we left, we, uh, we had put a minor anomaly in the shape of a strange uh, bird skull headed humanoid figure into a wood chipper to uh, become a spray of glitter and feathers. Uh, we have a, uh, a Dua Lipa performance uh, finishing up and what was once a dead body, now a uh, happily posing cardboard stand-in of a businessman next to himself, uh, who's smiling and giving a thumbs up about how good he's doing. The crowd, uh, a little bit uh, 
uh, dazed in a way that you might be if reality around you was shifting so quickly that in the moments you thought you saw something, you realized you actually didn't. And then, uh, but for the most part, seem to have not come out of this with an understanding of what happened during that time. Just a really, really good performance of Levitating followed by Sweetest Pie with an intermission of, by some incredible uh, TikTok linguists. And you know, <laughs> it sounds so normal when you phrase it that way, Caleb. Thanks. It's wonderful. Thanks. This game is all about being as normal as you can. For, I want to live uh, in that reality. Uh, and I uh, would like to uh, kind of tell you a couple things that have happened in these last few moments. One, uh, sitting uh, on a table right to the side of you, Layla, as you leave your split uh, and sort of brush yourself off, uh, is just a moment later, a normal briefcase and a ripple gun sitting on a uh, one of these sort of unfolding tables for you, and you know uh, immediately that they have been uh, hoarded there for you. The uh, rest of you know that a death anomaly has been sensed in the area. The smell still pervades, and uh, this uh, creature was only a minor anomaly of it, meaning there is an anomaly around here somewhere and it might be your responsibility to find it. But as you're sort of getting your bearings, you hear a familiar voice. And Cameron makes his way over to the three of you uh, and says, or not, not for the, all three of you, two of you, because one of you is currently disguised as a businessman, <laughs> and says, uh, wow, wasn't that performance amazing? Oh my gosh. For a second, I thought something grabbed me, but then I was just sort of floating. So I think everything's all right. Yes, a very normal human animatronics said showmanship from Dua Lipa. Uh, she's truly a, one of the greatest in her craft, which is stage shows. Um, yeah, <laughs> I, I, that, sounds, that sounds pretty good, uh, what you said, I think. Where's Riker? Oh, you know, Riker um, unfortunately has an allergy to pop music. Uh, can't be around top 40 gives Riker rashes. They're called Riker rashes. Oh, uh, yeah, I think I've gotten those before, but those are usually from going to concerts. It's uh, top 40 allergy. Um, he sort of like scratches the back of his neck and is like, well, okay, well, if you'll, I was really hoping that I'd get a chance to offer Riker like a, a possibility with an interview, but if you see him and you, you can, can let him know, uh, I think we might have a nice a nice place for somebody with his talents. Yes, uh, Riker is known as a great talent. Um, I will pass on your thoughts and prayers. Um, Not because, super religious, but sure. Yeah, we live together. Um, very normal 35-year-old man with a roommate. Oh, I thought... Honestly, I kind of got straight vibes, but... I... Yes. <laughs> no publishing. Oh, no. Oh. Oh. I'm so sorry. Did you think? No. I promise. I wasn't. I wasn't hitting on him. It's just work stuff. Okay. I think this is where our conversation ends, my friend. Oh yeah. And uh, I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna leave. <laughs> You see, he like, his like face falls. There is a moment you're able to tell. Uh, I think especially you, Wrecker, are able to tell from your position watching and not mm -hmm. having to walk away. There is like a pretty sincere and serious disappointment on his face. It, like a like a moment of like, oh gosh, I messed up. Um, I would like to approach Cameron as George Norrington. <laughs> okay, Sarah, no, <laughs> you can't collect another NPC. <laughs> Try and stop me. <laughs> um, because Cameron, like, Cameron honed in, and the fact that he's, like, following up, like, Riker's confused. Like, he hasn't done anything. Why would he want an interview? And, like, there's, he remembers that this was a thing that was tied to Ruby's ranch. Like, there's, like, a couple of dots that are weird, but mostly, like, why would... This guy, like, said that I have some kind of it factor, and I don't, like, that. I don't get that. Like, this guy's shady. Um, so I feel like, um, because I can only borrow, uh, the body's, like, appearance, mm -hmm. uh, Riker is going to walk up, uh, to, uh, Cameron and go, Morgan, that was quite a show. Oh, uh, yeah, it was. <laughs> uh, George, 
George Georgerton. I'm one of the other uh, uh, businesses here presenting at this here career fair. Uh, Cameron's on his phone. He says, oh, yeah? Uh, yeah, I was just wondering. I had some questions uh, for you. Uh, I heard you were mentioning that or that Riker guy. Uh, I, it, yeah, I thought he was pretty pretty stellar as well. I was wondering if maybe you had his contact information. Oh, no, I didn't get a card, but um, I'm pretty sure that he's on track with Mira, so you don't have to worry about that. Oh, uh, what would give you that that impression, uh, Cameron? Uh, okay, first of all, how do you know my name? Oh, I just, I was by the booth earlier. I heard somebody saying it. <laughs> Sarah, what does this accent work? You just look like a Cameron to me. <laughs> Riker's not good with voices. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, uh, sure. Um, well, I think that because Miros is one of the largest companies on Earth and we want to hire him. So, like, of course, it's going to happen. Sorry, I have to go, actually. Yeah, you, you, you go. That's, that's the totally normal thing to do. Okay. Uh, as uh, as he sort of leaves, you see that what he's doing is he's pinching the the like uh, Apple Maps. He's like looking at a space on his phone and kind of orienting, and then he's like walking away from the um, that conference. Uh, yeah. Um, I want to uh, circle back. Uh, Come with... backstage with your friends. Yeah, with the group, and I would like to drop the George Georgerton if I can. Um, yeah, you can. That's absolutely fine. Cool. Um, and look at both of them and say, "Yeah, that Cameron guy is is weird." Oh yeah, he uh, told me he wanted to speak to you, but I told him you had a, a allergy to Dua Lipa. Dua Lipa, I'm so sorry. You, um, Riker's not actually allergic to you. I know. Super He's just not he has allergic. like a stalker. I you should you you probably understand. Oh, I have to deal with that all the time. And <laughs> you know what I what I always say is um is if you are uh if you need help, I have a few guys. Like I can call somebody if you need. Oh no, I'm 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 I I was worried about it, but I got better, so I think I'm good. Thank you, Tyler, for, How does for it feel? looking out. How does it feel, Dua Lipa says? How does it feel to live with one of the uh, best comedians I've ever seen? I have to say, he's really amazing. You know, and he's really a, a side splitter. It's uh, it, it's <laughs> they, every day is brighter for it. Um, it's pretty. It's pretty great. Um, <clears throat> anyways, uh, <laughs> he's gonna turn uh, to Layla and uh, kind of. Uh, do you have like are you holding the case have you kind of like pocket dimensions the case can we pot so i know obviously the normal briefcase can fold whatever dimension is needed into it but can yeah. it also be folded into like the way that i play with the normal briefcase and the ripple gun is that they're not something that is themselves going to create loose ends at least not most of the time so in terms of its ability to just sort of exist they just kind of do they're tools you have you can pull them in and out of like a hammer space state okay um, cool. So they're they're hammer spaced right now. Okay. Uh but we'll look and say, uh, I don't know about you guys or anything that you've noticed that you would like to check out at this job fair. Uh, and he's looking at Dua Lipa to try like eh. uh but she's already was, distracted. Uh, she's off. Okay. Yeah, yeah, but that Cameron guy, uh he was looking at a map and like going there. It was like a pinpoint thing. I don't know if we follow him. Or if we try, like, not get distracted by him. I, like, I just, there's something off about that guy. It smells. And they were involved in the Ruby Ranch as well. Yeah. Or at least we're there. That's weird. That probably, that's probably not important. I think the thing that is important is probably the, now, you can tell me if this isn't abnormal. But it does feel weird that we watched a bunch of people leave the job fair and go to the graveyard next door. I just, I didn't know if morning customs were of that. That's true. That's fair. And you if it's and a that death the, problem. Uh, a lot of the tents that had been set up other than the main stage are now set up just like in the graveyard around. People are milling about the business and they have moved away from the smell and are now like 
setting up like right on top of this whole big graveyard area. Yeah, and that feels at least like where I'm from. Yeah, you right. You be... right. You you right as hell. You okay. right as hell there, Tyler. You you got it in one. Uh Okay. Um I think we should go over there and look I mean, I guess I kind of want to know where the smell came from, but I don't know if that's super important. Let's go over there uh, and look for death. I don't follow scary it. things that want to kill us. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, you make your way over to the graveyard, and what you see here is that there's a there's a little fence, kind of an older fence. This is a place that's intended for people to um, be able to like observe, but you get the sense that this is like not supposed to be an event space on this end of the park it is like it is like fenced off they have opened up these gates and have started kind of milling about on the pathways in between the graveyards but there's enough people that there's starting to be some spillover as people step onto the like places in between the graves it seems like people are trying not to like trample on top of graves themselves but you also get the sense that these people are not that worried about it um and this is a uh, the some of the events of before the sort of networking even a row kind of like the job fair is getting like reset up over here um great uh i don't i don't know if there's like a rolling for this but can we can, can we investigate some i want to see if there's uh <laughs> yeah the only reason there would be rolling is if you think that there's a way that you might be able to improve your investigation by reshaping reality okay um but if not, then yeah, I can tell you what you get after sort of investigating. If you let me know what kind of things you're looking for. Yeah, no, I just want to look around um, for anything. I don't know anything even weirder than them resetting up the job fair here. Um, yes. <laughs> um, in terms of weirdness, I think uh, there's not a lot here that sort of draws your attention. The smell is definitely less bad in this area. But as you are looking around, something that nobody else seems to be paying attention to, but that you notice, is that a lot of these graves have been dug up. They are dug. There is like a there are like empty graves all over. There are piles of dirt uh, nearby, and it's not like super clean dug up. It's not like they're ready for a new one. It is like there are some smashed uh, like uh, caskets and uh, and open graves that have had dirt to sort of haphazardly ripped out of them. Okay, cool. So I think I'm walking around with the group and I'm like, um, so I know Day of the Dead is a thing on Earth, but I don't believe it's this month and I don't believe it's like this, but I, maybe I'm wrong. Mm. I, nobody, uh... <laughs> We uh, like I told you that happens every month. Uh, it's when you get to give me all your candy. Right, uh, right, right. But, but that, that was, was earlier that this month. Correct, correct, correct. Okay. And this isn't like a special do-over month uh, like we had in July last year. So I think we're good. Um, but uh, uh, um, are there is there like event staff like someone with a who looks like they're kind of leading the the move uh you see a lot of people with staff shirts on but yeah there's there is a a woman uh in a uh, sort of a black t-shirt that says staff on the side and says like uh business development conference on the front uh and she is um sort of giving orders on where to put the tents and like moving things around um but not in a super organized way just like oh yeah over there people are looking to her for yeah i would want to go up to her and try and get like a understanding like i'd ask some questions uh hi yeah hi can i help you with anything hi yeah no i uh i was here uh to investigate some of the job opportunities i see we're kind of moving the event over here i'm just wondering uh why that is oh, well i mean uh, you know good for you if you didn't notice but that whole side of the park was so smelled awful Absolutely awful. So this was the oh. solution that we hit on for now. Hmm. We did that. Uh, that, that was it suggested by somebody. I'm just surprised that we didn't kind of uh, like. I get like closeness and stuff. Um. Do you have a map of the new setup at all, or is it just kind of put stuff where you can put it? Oh, right now we're just trying to fit things where they are. I'm sorry. We yeah, we did have maps for the old uh, setup. Yeah, but now it's yeah. just kind of uh, free for all. Did, is there something you were looking for? I can help you get there. I do uh, just okay. there's there's the, the this doesn't seem like a safe pl 
place to put the job there. There's just a bunch of holes. And I, I just motion at an empty grave. Yeah. <laughs> she looks at it uh, and she does kind of nod. And she says, she leans toward you and says, listen, I think this is gross, but uh, I got a, got some orders from the guys in charge. And this is what I have to do. I mean, I'm just trying to make it work as best I can. Of- the guys in charge, uh, is there like a company that's promoting the entire event or an entrepreneur, you know? Well, this year our our uh, our sponsor is Miros, but the you know I kind of answered it all of the ones around here. Miros, Milkwater, Variance, Voyage, Regency. Uh, if any of them gives me an order, like I can't say no, but I'm taking orders directly from the uh, the Miros conglomerate right now. Great, gotcha. great, 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 great. Well, thank you. You've been a peach. Uh, thanks. <laughs> Read Shadow Legends. <laughs> Um, <laughs> Layla, uh, is there anything you want to look into while we're here, or you get, you get a hunch that you have about what maybe we should, or what you should do? Not, not we, because I mean, I'm, you're not really my boss. You can't really tell me what to do. So, <laughs> mechanics question: What yeah. happens if you put a normal person inside of a normal briefcase? You can't. It doesn't work. The two things, the normal briefcase only works on anomalies, um, and it has a specific safety against working on your team. Damn. Cool. I was going to put so Dua Lipa in that briefcase. Left. I just want to put that but on I the table real fast. I didn't say Layla followed you two, for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> Layla would just like to, because Cameron went back to like a desk or whatever, I assume. like Cameron, Cameron walked off into the park. Oh, so he if did? You wanna, if you want to follow Cameron away from the conference, you can. Yes, I would. Okay, um, so as uh, as the uh, the two of them head that way, are you trying to look particularly sneaky about it? Or are you are you reshaping reality to be hidden, or are you just walking behind him? I'm just walking behind him because I find that if you walk with purpose, people will just let you do what you want. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't seem to notice. He's like really focused on his phone. He's like looking around, and so you are there to see this exact moment that the other two hear which is Cameron walks up to the edge of this large pit in the ground. He uh, clears his throat. He hasn't looked back at you. He clears his throat. He's like, Ugh. you see him put his phone in his pocket and put just sort of rub his face for a second. And then he turns around and he goes, um, before he even starts turning, he starts yelling, Help! Help! Help me! Uh, and then uh, turns around and with a quick step back, sort of slides backward into the pit. There's a moment where he sees your eyes and he looks kind of surprised that you've seen him do this, but his what the other two of you hear is this scream of someone yelling for help from away from, from deeper into the park. Can I catch him? Uh, well, how? You are you were following around from a sneaky distance, I'm assuming, so probably not uh, an easy catch, but if there's something you wanted to... Uh... No, I did not say sneaky distance. I was walking right behind him. If you were walking right behind him, this would never have happened because he would oh. have noticed you. So okay, that's, in that's that neat. case, all right. So for yeah. the sake of this, we'll say it was a sneaky distance. Yeah. Um. Do we only get one normal briefcase per mission? Yep. Yes. Damn it. Okay. If well, you, hold on. If you want a second to think about it, there is something I would like to do. If sure, it'll, yeah, if it'll help give you a second here. Um, which is that as soon as I hear somebody yell, Help, help or <laughs> whatever he says. Um yeah, help exactly. Uh, say again <laughs> Look, I we oh, we can't have loose my. ends, Caleb. You've no, created, that's so good. You've no, created no, that's amazing. Amazing. It's <laughs> so good. Well, you see, we've created a situation oh because I've blown through all of my presents in the last few rolls. Um, and now I'm at zero again. All right. Amazing. Let's see what happens. Um, I will say, and I don't know if this isn't something we thought to bring up earlier, um, but I do, last session, I got some burnout protection from eating children's drawings, and I have not used it yet. Does yeah, it? Yeah, you've got it then. Okay, you've cool. Still got it. Cool, 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 cool. Um, so does that mean I roll flat if in that case instead of... Yes. Okay, cool. Um, I'm going to go ahead and roll 64 again. Uh, um... It's Jason Ness! 
Yeah! Sometimes as yeah. you, know, you want, or three commendations, or you can recharge three of those quality assurances you've spent. Um. So here's the fun thing about say again is that on transcendence, I can speak for the target at any time in the next hour. Um. So I'm just I'm just gonna keep that on. Um. Yeah. So at- that actually is an important thing. You, they heard. The, the crowd still heard help, so he could believe he said something different. But now that you've latched onto his voice, you could add something to the end of that if you. Like. Yeah, yeah. So it's help, help. I would love to hear more Dua Lipa, and I don't know where she went. <laughs> <laughs> and I turn to Riker, and I'm like, D- "Do you think that did it? Do you think? Do you think they fell for that one? I just love her music so much. <laughs> it's coming yeah, Riker... deeper in a pit." Yeah. Riker is fast walking towards the actual yelling. Yeah, yeah. I'm, so... I'm going to follow. <laughs> okay, so that, that's but that gives you a second here. Covers. Yeah. Uh, so I, I, I do see him like we connect eyes, right? And I see him fall yes. back into the pit. So you would say that I know where he is going because he's going into the pit, correct? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So I would like to use just keep walking and yes. trap him in the maze instead. This is such a cool. This is such a cool uh, way to use just keep walking. Will you read it for us? Yes. Yeah, so just keep walking. When you give someone directions, are fleeing from a pursuer, or know where someone is going, you may attempt to trap them in a maze <laughs> or endless hallway. Roll persistence. <laughs> Odd uh, success. They remain trapped until you make another roll. For each additional three above one, you may trap an additional target or make the maze last for additional rolls past the first. On a failure, you speed them immediately along to their destination. They reach their target or catch you immediately. All right. So let's roll for that stat. How many do you have in that quality? In, per- in, in persistence, I have three. Great. So no negative. Yep. All right. <sighs> on two threes okay so, Go ahead. so the situation you're in is that that'll give me four chaos but for every three you add to this right now you can spend one of those threes to make it so uh you have two more rolls of something before he gets dropped out every mm-hmm. three you add right now means you have another roll you can make going forward before he pops out of this maze so it's gotcha. you can spend all of them if you wanted and like pump it up that way um or just a couple or none at all it's up to you Oh, I'm going to burn all of them, obviously. All right. Right. Do it. <laughs> so that'll take you up to five, which means uh, in total you have uh, five um, five rolls um, before he is released. Um, and that gives me just one chaos. Perfect. So I, got two. So I will go ahead and subtract those. So, so you erase those. He. Um, so are you putting him in a maze that's like a... a a tunnel, like a dirt tunnel maze, just like keeping him walking around in a dirt yeah. tunnel forever. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So his voice vanishes, but you are confident that you have put him in a little pocket dimension where nothing can happen and where he can't affect anything that happens uh, until you have made five rolls. Um, so Cameron falls down into this endless pit, and the real pit is left there um, as the other two um, come and meet you. <sighs> um. Oh my god. Oh my god. <sighs> Riker right, I'm retired. Sweating and breathing really hard. <laughs> this was a lot of human exhortation, so I should be tired. Um. Anyway, where did he go? He's in a maze right now. Oh. I'll let him. I'll let him out. I'll let him out eventually. Is this pit the maze? No. no What's no, this pit? That's a, don't. He, he'll come out in a, in a little while. Okay. Um, no, he's he's in a maze that isn't this pit. But the question remains: What is this pit? That's correct. Nope, that is not the question. Anyway, <laughs> that's not the question. I'm stupid. I'm so sorry. That no, no, no. Just oh, okay. it's okay. Well, he'll just t- just tell us everything. We'll just we'll just listen. I mean, listen. <laughs> so he listen loosely. very casually. Like, leaned back into the hip and cried out, help me. Like, he didn't even realize I was there behind him, following him at a sneaky distance. Um, So I think this is some ploy of some kind, clearly. I don't know what, but we have a little bit of time before he pops back out of the maze I put him in. Um, Although we will have to deal with putting some sort of safety net underneath so he doesn't perish, presumably. 
Tyler, I think you're right. I do think we need to look at this pit. So uh, you should do that. Uh, you should look. You should look at that. You should look at the pit. You know, I think just because I don't know what Earth pits are like, it's going to be hard yeah, for me. Yes, so you have. You have. No, no. A really it's going to be hard for me to know. You know, no, if this pit think, is strange. So. You know what? I think. I think you're underestimating all that training we've done. Okay, How great. I jump in the pit. We watched. <laughs> Uh, hi, Alar, you leap down the pit. Uh, it's at a little bit of a slope, so as you go into it, it like y you're definitely being pulled downward by gravity, but you are like sliding down uh, on the dirt on the side. Uh, and eventually you come uh, to a stop as this uh, pit kind of levels out uh, and a little bit more dirt has been kicked up behind you, but you, uh, you're you in a very, very dark space that based on the sounds when you slide in, is pretty wide. It's very dark in here. There's light coming up from above that's illuminating the area around you, but directly forward, there is a bit of a tunnel. This whole area looks very freshly dug as well. Um, and the uh, something about this is like, you get the sense, I would know if there was a giant pit in this park. I yeah. would have put something around it. But uh, in much the same way the graves have been dug up, this big hole uh, is here. Great, 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 great. Well, I have been sent on a mission to investigate this pit because my good friend and caretaker, who only has my best interests at heart, told me that this was the thing I should do. Uh, so I'm going to assume that I need to just keep moving forward, and I'm going to do that. <laughs> All right. Are you going to do anything to uh, help you see in this area? Um. Well, you know, I... I was going to get a cell phone, and it would have had a flashlight. We established but... we established early on that Tyler glows just a little bit. <gasps> That's true. We did establish that I glow. I forgot about that. Okay, yes. Sarah, absolutely. you're a hero. Oh, I was about yeah. to mention that I had a flip phone, and it didn't have a flashlight function um, to make life harder for myself. <laughs> uh, and as I'm thinking about that, I'm like, oh, right, I glow. Um, and I continue to do that as I walk down this dirt hallway. Yeah, you make your way into this next space, which is a much wider area that has been carved out. The space around you in kind of a little bit of an orb is glowing from your light green. And as you make your way, was it green? Is that right? Yeah, yeah it's green. Just a yeah. little bit green. As you make your way forward, um, it's just, it's dirt, it's dirt, and then there is a skull uh, about at eye level to you, um, hanging upside down and looking at you. I say hanging, it's not swinging. It is fixed to what appears to be additional bones that are jutting out back into the darkness from that skull. But this skull is like the furthest out point of something uh, connected to bones that you can see. I don't know any better, so I'm going to... Hello, um, what happened to your skin? Uh, there is no response from the skull. Right, doesn't have lungs. Okay, well, this isn't anything to worry about. This is a human grave custom. I'm going to continue walking. Kylar, uh, you perhaps would not know immediately that this was a strange thing, but it's at least not something you've ever seen before. As you move down the side, you see that a bunch of uh, these bones have like fused together. Some of them are older, some of them look a little bit newer, they are all discolored in different ways, but they have all been fused together into like this long pile, uh, kind of jutting out at weird angles around in, after you walk for a second along the edge of it, what appears to be kind of a rounded ring. It's not perfect, but as you're moving along the side of it, there is this big wide open space up here and this like uh, connected web of bones building a ring um, okay. as you move down it. Cool. Uh, I'm going to stop walking forward for a second. I'm going to pull out my flip phone and I'm going to call Riker because we're on a family plan and it won't cost me minutes. <laughs> um, um, hello, Riker. Riker, are yeah, you there? Okay. Yeah, buddy. I, I explicitly said do not keep going forward. I just, are you okay in there? Yes. You you told me to keep. Okay. Um, anyway. No, yeah. you're you're fine. You're fine. Yeah, you're fine. Yeah, um, everything's listen. good down here. It seems it seems lovely. You remember when you told me about the necropolis? It's like that. There's just there's a lot of bones, and okay. there may be art. A lot of bones. Are they different bones, as if they came from different graves? Well, you see, it's sort of interesting because they are different bones in that they belong mm -hmm. to different people, but they're sort of mm -hmm. they're sort of on one creature currently. 
cool. Or I and say one creature. Like... It's sort of like a sculpture. Uh-huh. Was there like a... Am I on speaker? Part... Yes. Yes, you are. Okay, perfect. <laughs> And I am 100% holding the phone out so Layla can hear all of this. Okay. Hi, Layla. Um, I know the necropolis is in Italy. Can, can you try speaking Italian at least? <laughs> Tyler behind you, a, a there's a light no. rumble for a moment. I know. Yeah, the only Italian I know is va- is vodka, which is cow. That's literally it. Um, vodka. <laughs> it seems to respond to vodka. Oh shit! Okay, uh, just hey, buddy, just stay right there. Uh, we're gonna come. We're gonna come help you. Yeah, you should okay. come here as quickly as you can. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna hang up and turn to Layla. <laughs> Okay, you've got the guy in in the dirt maze, right? How, do you, can you keep mm-hmm. him in there till we can sort this out? I have, I'm keeping him in there as long as possible. <laughs> awesome, great. I think you're uh, perfect. Uh, do you want to jump in this dirt pit and save my roommate with me? No. <laughs> <laughs> that is understandable. I'm obsessed with Layla, <laughs> but I. Will. I, I I appreciate that. I, I appreciate your professionalism. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, the agency will hear about your greatness. Uh, great. Uh, and Riker's <laughs> going to jump into the pit uh, in a very unceremoniously uh, kind of way and start hurrying to get to Tyler. Vaka. 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 <laughs> um, vaka. <laughs> With a sudden grab, uh, you feel the your body like pinched, your arms stuck to your side, your legs uh, like uh, clamped beneath you as this huge claw, the length of your body, has lifted you up and pulled you over the edge of this large ring of bones. Uh, you are pulled above it and your glowing light is able to shine across more of it. And you see below you, actually canonically at the second for the drama, when you're scared, you glow more. Yeah, How about that? that's perfect. I love it. <laughs> so the, the, uh, the green light uh, splashes across what appears to be an enormous nest built out of fused bones. The, uh, the hand holding you is connected to the enormous body of what appears to be a kind of bird. It looks a little bit like a harpy, actually, in that its upper arms are wings and its legs end in these giant talons, one of which has grabbed you. It lifts you up to its face, and its face is this huge bird skull made out of a hundred tiny human skulls, all moving together uh, to form this Vodka. shape. It, and it is <laughs> clenching uh, you. This will deal harm as huh? it clenches. Okay. Tell me about harm. It's the first time any of us have taken harm. Yes. So... In this game, uh, we have a thing called harm. Harm is a little bit like damage. Another way to describe it when you're dealing with it in the regular world is that the higher the harm, the more supernatural the thing that is hurting you. One harm is always enough to kill a mundane person. And it is also the thing that you would ascribe to like a gun or a sword or a dagger. That's one harm and it is not going to raise an alarm. As harm numbers go up and the amount of damage that can be done to someone goes up, it also shows a scale in the amount of uh, supernatural natural effect that that death would have. For example, uh, we didn't talk about it earlier, but if we had gotten into the weeds of it, uh, that that crow killing that man was probably a two harm situation. Um, And that will, uh, each of you has started, uh, just to make the math a little easy, you all have basically four harm resistance that the agency gives you that you are able to use to protect yourself before that last point of harm would kill your mundane body. Uh, And this is another situation where it would probably do about two. Okay. To you, as it clenches. Hey, uh, friends, you should walk down the hallway even faster. I'm being squeezed. Um, Vodka! <laughs> <laughs> uh, as we kind of like step into this glowing room and seeing uh, Tyler being crushed, um, I feel like my protective would kick in, which is my desire to protect the dependent Tyler. Instills me with a fire, or instills a fire within you. If your dependent is in immediate danger, you receive one free quality assurance on any roll to prevent them, uh, prevent that danger, or protect them. I know yes. we kind of swapped out. So is this still available? So technically, to this me? skill is not is not uh, something okay, that you okay. have um, because it has been replaced with the thing that got you the burnout. Yeah, really the burnout. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. 
Gotcha. Okay. Ooh. Let me see what else I can do then. Um, and you also have the opportunity to respond to this, Tylar, if you have an ability you would like to use. Oh, no. It's much funnier if I just sit here and scream. If I die, I die. I'm cool with that. Uh, okay, good. Um, I... If I Let's die, it's going to be much harder on Riker than it's going to be on Keegan, the player. Um, and that's <laughs> honestly just really funny. Uh, da, 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 da. I feel like I want to make a tough decision uh, and make a necessary sacrifice. All right. Um, <laughs> Tyler, um, I'm going to... The gun gets rid of the anomaly entirely, right? And we have to weaken the anomaly to get it in the suitcase. Yes. I'm going to try and use this distraction of Tyler being held. Um, actually, no. I I want the sacrifice to be myself, actually. Okay. Um. I want to try and get this thing to uh, drop Tyler and grab me instead. All right. What would you like to do to try to make that happen? Uh, I would like to scream at this thing. <laughs> you want some more? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you're using it again. Let's do it. So you'll roll for awesome. this quality. How many do you have left? Uh, I don't have any empathy left. But it I think you haven't gone. used your burnout release yet, right? Uh, I did. Oh, you did um, use it. Okay. I used it um, yeah. right after I did all my stuff. So I am at minus one. Minus so one. Here's hoping. Oh, gosh. I did the thing again. Oh, my gosh. But I already have three threes. Three threes. Heck yeah. Try three threes total? Right? All right. Oh, no. Four threes. Holy shit. Okay. <laughs> four, four threes, threes is worse, actually. But, <laughs> but those is, it's yes. fine. It's fine, though. Four threes means you've. So you've got the four. You can use the additional abilities for the threes on that. Yeah. And I'll get two chaos. Okay. Um. So. Oh, because you have to get exactly three. Oh, yeah. Okay. Exactly. Um. So I would say. Um. I obviously want this to hit the target, and if I get above threes, it can spread uh, the desire among other nearby targets. So I guess, like, my hope would be if there's something lurking in the shadows. It also feels this way. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and in fact, there is. You see that there is an egg, egg in the nest. And when you reach out with this power, you feel that there is something fully formed waiting in that egg. Hey. You can give that ability to the thing inside that egg if you'd like. Um, yeah, I want the egg thing to stay in the egg. <laughs> so you're not going um, to activate it for the egg. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't want it. To, I don't want it to come out. But I'm uh, like, as I kind of use that at the thing, I'm just gonna scream. There's something in the egg. <laughs> yeah, that's how babies are born. <laughs> uh, I'll give you a commendation for this necessary sacrifice. And what happens is Excellent. it, uh, it's it swoops with its other leg because it only it, it has to stand on one of the claws. It drops mm -hmm. Tylar uh, <clears throat> to land with a thud onto the uh, the bone. Uh, nest uh, and then reaches out and grabs you with this huge crunch it squeezes. That is going to be two harm uh, as you hey, feel use the agency use uh, attempt to defend you with your uh, your four uh, emergency assurances you have. You can do something else if you'd like. So take two? You Sorry. would take two out of your four. Use yeah. it. I have a question. With universal um, recipient, can mm -hmm. I divvy out that harm or is it just everybody gets two? Uh... Will you read it to me? I can tell you. Uh, when you are harmed, you may roll persistence. On a success, select a nearby living human or anomaly other than the one that harmed you. They are harmed instead, and you are unhurt. Sarah, you can kill the baby. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So if I I would like to try and do that and direct it towards the egg. That would absolutely and, work. Yeah. Okay. I want to make this thing think if it hurts us, it hurts the egg. Okay. So that is one two threes uh, but minus one because i don't have any persistence so a three okay so i'll get five chaos which brings you to um, 18 you succeed <clears throat> okay uh and you are able to um uh uh 
transmit well the squeezing pressure that you give you see that as it's touching you you feel nothing at all and the egg begins to crunch in uh the egg, the sides of the shell it, this thing does not have time uh to stop what it's doing to you so this two harm uh crunches in on the egg and you see there's like a little bit of a like tiny little ah, noise as one of those uh creatures that was attacking you the long humanoid winged mm -hmm. uh figures uh suddenly scrunch down below and in response to that noise this huge bird drops you as well and looks startled as that um that uh small one crumples to the ground in the pieces of eggshell around it um yeah, I'm gonna yell. That's right. That's right. Thing hurt us, and you're and you're gonna you're gonna hurt your stuff. So maybe chill the fuck out. Layla, what are you doing during this? <laughs> Layla simply pulling out a gun. So at this point, <laughs> I just, yeah, because because okay, because you're not grabbed. Riker's not grabbed. It's time to shoot it. As far as Layla's concerned. Uh, you can. The thing that'll happen if you shoot it is that uh, you guys will not get a, like a reward from the agency for this time. Um, but for capturing it, that is the ideal that the agency wants. But you're welcome. You are welcome to do that if you think this is a dangerous enough situation that that's what you need to do. Kind of a death anomaly and causing two of the harm we get for four. Uh, yeah. I we also have to... Cameron trapped in a maze that we could probably get answers about the anomaly about because he seems to be luring us there. He did, yes. I so do maybe that want to work? say something real fast, which is I've discovered from the chat that at wow. 20 chaos, Caleb gets to say, hey, I won. Um, and I feel like I should note we are at 18 chaos. <laughs> So, oh, no, 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 I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. The situation is, and this is actually, this is fine to note. Uh, typically, oh. there is an ability called Overwhelm that is 30 chaos that allows me to end an anomalous life. If I were to extrapolate out for you from kill, that's probably around 10. Okay. Woof. No, yeah, I've okay. discovered that as soon as I said that, uh, Christian, uh, Real Beat Castle in the chat was like, I'm lying. This isn't real. I assumed it might actually be a real thing that you could just uh, <laughs> declare you won the session. <laughs> <laughs> no. And, and it, it felt. Would it, be a, would it be 20? Would it be 20? I don't you know? know. 10 was flat out kill a man. So it could be. <laughs> It just Eddie, would, it you do you do you whatever it okay, whatever no. makes sense in, in your mind in you can situation. absolutely do whatever you want um i was worried that he would immediately win if you didn't shoot it um so you're good okay. yeah no it's getting perfectly honest you put something melanated on this class we're shooting it nope too hard <laughs> no thanks i love that <laughs> your, your life all right so are you firing the ripple gun yeah absolutely okay the ripple gun, as you pull the trigger, the lights on the back of it um, light up. There is a slight humming and a vibration in the handle as this, uh, this energy congeals right by the front and then a wave of sound bursts out from the ripple gun. In the air, it looks just like a, a ripple in space. This little like warbled vision, almost like something is too hot to look at, kind of shifting in a ring toward this uh, large anomaly. And the second that it touches her, there is a shattering. This whole uh, body just like breaks into little pieces, which then begin to dissolve into smaller pieces. And as that uh, as that little anomaly, uh, the minor anomaly kind of wriggles on the ground, this one looks startled as pieces of it dissolve completely. And within a couple of seconds, that anomaly is gone. The minor anomaly is still there. It's injured. It is. Um, it is. Uh, it was protected a little bit by the egg. It is sort of like wriggling on the ground, but the major anomaly has been eliminated. Uh, Riker is just gonna say we're not leaving empty-handed. Uh, and if I don't know if this is how the normal briefcase works, but I would like to think that it's accessible to all of us. He just kind of reaches into the void and pulls it out, uh, and I want to try and put at least the minor anomaly uh, in the suitcase. Yeah, you can absolutely do that. Um, this thing has been hurt enough that you are able to slide it into the suitcase. What does uh, the minor anomaly look like, real fast? Because we just it looks ex just exactly like, like the one. the one from before, the like long humanoid winged figure with these dark feathers and these long talons. Okay, cool. I think as Riker's going for it, I'm like, can can we name it before you put it in the suitcase? Dead. Tyler, you know you, we're not supposed to name it. We grow too attached. What were you thinking? I mean, his name's Vaka, no? 
All right. I just think he's gonna go night night. I just think if we put, I just think if we killed his mother, the least we could do is give him a name. That is a very human thing that you're doing there, Tyler. Does that you you feel like you want to pay respects to this thing we just ended? Oh no, I just I just, I feel like a child should have a name. That's all. So a feeling you feel like a child should have a name. <laughs> I feel like I learned uh. something. I feel like I learned something. <laughs> <laughs> and Riker is saying this out loud. <laughs> he the critter into the suitcase. Goodbye, Vaka. Vaka disappears in a flash of red light. Uh, and the um, this room, getting a little less dim as Tyler gets a little less scared, um, is uh, now just full of this large bone nest. And you all are alone. Okay, as a as a as it is once for as it is a right a situation right for one liner, one liner after the the major anomaly disappears, kind of uh, blows on the not hot ripple gun, lights out. Yes, lights out. <laughs> it dims. You are um, able to climb your way out of this pit. Uh, we should probably uh, get the easily. man out of a maze real fast. He'll, he'll tumble out. Yeah, actually, Layla will be waiting for him to tumble out because knowing that it's not just a drop to the death. So, like, okay, we'll wait. Yeah, I okay. So I can control him for the next hour. We should probably get him out more quickly. <laughs> You're welcome, Layla, if you'd like to draw, to remove him just, from this maze. Okay, all right. I wasn't sure if that was another activation there. Remember. Okay, we'll drop him. All right. Uh, he sort of staggers out of this door maze, covered in dirt, like obviously extremely stressed, hair just like off in all directions, uh, has been wandering around and sliding around in this like tilted dirt maze forever. Uh, there's one. Holy, oh my God, thank God. I'm out of there. That was horrible. It wasn't supposed to be that big. No, 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 no. You were you were just asleep. Don't you remember being asleep just now? You were having a bad nightmare. And then as him I say, yeah, it was a really bad nightmare. Um and he, uh, <laughs> under say again he does believe the new sentence is what he means. Uh yeah, it was a really bad nightmare. He looks at the three of you and even though he's he's saying that and agreeing with that, you can tell that there's a there's a fear in his eyes looking at the three of you. Like a real fear. Uh, yeah, yeah uh, our friend here saw that you kind of came down here. We were worried after the show, you know, there was just a lot going on and you know, we came to check on you. I was interested in that job you were offering. They said you were, you know, trying to hire me. So I'm sorry, uh, that we... job offer is not available for you anymore. <laughs> Cameron says, yeah, 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 do you? Do you want a, a job? Well, I, just, I was hoping you could tell me more about it. Um, but if now's a bad time, you seem kind of involved in this dirt pit you got going on here. No, it's okay. He's like sitting on the ground. He says, can you, can you help me up? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, that's fine. Uh, he is going to uh, reach out for you. Um, and as uh, you reach down to grab him, I am going to spend ten chaos. <laughs> <laughs> uh, taking me down to eight. Yeah. There is a loud bang. Shit. Riker has been shot and is dead. Um his his dying words are of course, I'm sorry, there was no job offer for you this whole time. <laughs> no, Cameron's not dead. Cameron's Riker. dead. Riker. Riker's hey, dead. Hey, Riker's dead. Fuck! I missed. <laughs> I wasn't paying good attention. <laughs> Cameron uh, looks uh, eyes wide, stunned. This has happened over him. Riker has fallen down on him. And he's like, oh, 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 and he like pushes Riker off, uh, startled. And there is there is blood on him. Uh, we. I, 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 do we see who shot Riker? You don't. Not immediately. Um, uh, 
my 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 roommate my uh, uh Le- 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 Layla uh do you did did d- d- the gun the 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 R- Riker Layla we have to do something Layla what are we supposed to do Riker was in charge <laughs> I mean, Layla's looking around for where the gunshot came from. Well, actually, she assumed it was Cameron. Does Cameron not have a gun on? No, Cameron does not. Cameron does not have a gun on him. Where did that shot come from? Where did it come from? Um. I literally, we got a a note in the chat, Sarah, writing on her character sheet, dead. It's in my notes. It's in all caps. (laughs) (laughs) Um, you, I, oh, I have so many questions, but right now I think it is most important to get out of this area since someone is shooting us in the dark. So I would like to know a shortcut. That's a great idea. All right. I'm losing my mind over here. I know. I'm like, this is so good. Two threes. Um, no a shortcut. What was the skill for that one? Let me check. Real it quick. is initiative. initiative. Two threes. Uh, do you have any points in that? Skill I do right not now? have any points. So in it's the minus initiative. one. So it's down to one. Three. One. Cool. That's okay. still a success, but it's down to one. I get five more chaos. Yeah. I wanted to get everybody out of here. Although, although man, if it's only one, then that means only I can get out of here. You so should leave two. if you can. No, no one is going to blame you for running in this situation. I got, you know, I'm gonna make sure I grab the because you have to go grab the normal key case, and I'm and I am leaving, and I feel very bad, but I do want the mission to be successful. Yeah, what is your shortcut? Where where are you headed? Uh, so shortcut is back to headquarters at this are, point. Are you just opening basically a portal in space for you, like walking behind a tree and just leaving? Yeah, yeah. I mean, again, it's dark, it's dark in here enough already. So yeah, whatever. Just go behind. Yeah. You know, do that. Run down the uh, hallway. You, <laughs> you dive into headquarters. I'm going to spend another 10 chaos. Yeah, come Bang. On. A shot runs out. Tylar, you have been shot as uh, Layla leaves and you have died. I would like for each of you to mark three demerits on your sheet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cool, 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 cool. I don't have a lot of dem- Me and Sarah have been hitting each other with as many demerits as possible. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Layla, you make it back to headquarters safe, uh, and I think as you stagger away from that sound behind you, and you know that Tyler has been shot, we can uh, wrap up and do our credits. Holy shit, shit. Caleb! You what? can't kill two characters and be like, anyway, now we're wrapping up. Bye, everyone. Hey, <laughs> yeah, we'll do th- we'll do a singer. Don't worry, there'll be more. Okay. Let's do our wrap up. Yeah, let's do our wrap up. Um. Uh, hi everyone. This has been Triangle Agency uh, uh, plus twenty XP. <laughs> we all just died. Um, uh, wrap, 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 wrapping up. Uh, yeah, I'm Keegan EXC. You can find me online at KeeganEXC.com. Uh, someone else go. <laughs> uh, Petty, would you mind? Sure. sure yeah, uh, I'm Petty or Penny Energy on uh, Twitter. Uh, y- yes, we know Petty Energy on Twitch. N N G nine eight on Twitter because what's for inconsistency? Uh, yeah, you can find <laughs> me there. Um, I mostly show up on other people's channel at this point, but now that I'm all settled in my new place, I plan to start streaming from here eventually when I'm not so busy. Um, yeah, that's me. And hey, I didn't die. <laughs> you Yay! made it. You're the only one not stressed right now. Um, and I, I love that for you. Uh, Sarah, you go. Caleb. Oh, yes. having, I'm gonna have Caleb go. Fine. Yeah, yeah. Um, my name is Caleb Zane Hewitt. I'm the lead designer of Triangle Agency, uh, and we are going to be kickstarting this game in almost exactly a month. Please sign up at kickstarter.hauntedtable.games. Uh, you can also go to our website, which is just hauntedtable.games, and sign up for our newsletter, where we give you notifications about shows like this that we have coming up. We have a ton of stuff happening next month, too. Um, so we're going to be doing a lot of cool uh, episodes of Triangle Agency, revealing more about the game, and then hopefully crowdfunding a really, really cool book. We finally got the final version version of the cover this week and I am dying about it um but I uh would love uh would love to see a bunch of you there at the campaign and at all of our other things we're going to do and especially next week as we do the final uh episode of this one um 
So thank you so much. Oh, you can find me at C Zane H. C, my middle name is Zane, last name, less initial H. Anywhere, <laughs> basically. Awesome. Uh, and I'm Osarix Franco. Uh, I play Riker Dodge, and I did not dodge this one because uh, I'm dead. Uh, but if you like my face and the words I say sometimes, you can find me on Twitch, uh, Twitter, TikTok, all the places at Osarix Franco. Uh, I'm just going to sit here and wait till next Monday. Um, yeah, so we're not moving from this chair. exact spot. <laughs> <laughs> um, and this is I'm 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 freaking out. It's very good. The uh, gentle we go to normal human heaven. Yeah. <laughs> I'll give us a little thing to leave on. The gentle hum of an air conditioner, familiar to anyone who's had to spend a lot of time in a modern office. The little boop of a water cooler, uh, with a bunch of little paper cups next to it. The, um, the, the light vibrations and, and dripping sounds of a coffee machine running and sitting at a table in a little break room on a random floor of the Triangle Agency headquarters. Suddenly, uh, and just moments later, are Riker and Tylar. What do you say? Uh, hey, buddy. It's St. Clown Posse. <laughs> that is where we will leave for this week thank you, thank you all so much bye, bye everyone bye. we're just gonna keep waving yep I'm waving forever two hands three hands